Monaco Pizza presents SCP. The Steve Dangle Podcast with your hosts, Steve Dangle and Adam Wilde. To quote the one and only Nas, Eugene Melnick woke up this morning and he got himself a gun and shot it at every Ottawa Senators fan and 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 media member and anybody that's ever said, hey, Ottawa's cool. I thought you were going to say, to quote Nas, I'm line mates with Kasperi Kaplan. <laughs> Different right. Nas. I forgot about the rap. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. <clears throat> so, Adam. Folks, let me tell you what Iceberg does. So, Adam will send me a message. Steve, something just happened in hockey. Mm-hmm. I need you to avoid it. Sometimes it's like 48 hours, and I'm like, I kind of work in hockey, man. (laughs) I can't just be blind to this. Right. And I'm doing a radio show after. And normally it's not a top story, but this one was a top story. Back-to-back top stories. So he sends me the Bob Nicholson thing, Mm -hmm. and he goes, whoa, whoa, don't. You can't know what that is. All I know is it involves Bob Nicholson. And Toby Reader. You know that. And, yeah, that was it was impossible to avoid. I know who it's about. I don't know what he said. I assume it was dumb. Can I just say, everybody used to start calling him Tobias. That's his name. This to- Toby nonsense. I don't know where Toby came is, from. Is nonsense. His Whoa. name is Tobias. Whoa. Whoa. Get it right. You know what? Tobias is so much stronger than Toby, too. Remember when the Leafs had Toby Lindbergh? <laughs> no. I remember when they had Tobias Lindbergh. Tobias Lindbergh. <laughs> and he was traded and traded and traded again and somehow ended up back in Ottawa. And has somehow ended up back on a team he was previously on twice already. <clears throat> yeah. That's difficult to do. And then... <clears throat> Eugene Melnick. You know what's funny? Every now and then, I've said it out loud on the show, I go, are we picking on the Oilers and Sens? Oh, yeah. And the Oilers and Sens trip over themselves to go, no, you're not. (laughs) (laughs) Well, it's so funny because usually in a normal year, like when we started this podcast, we started it as Leaf fans who were very frustrated. and, And a normal... In a normal year such as that, and a normal year being the Leafs are bad, um, you know, a, a Bob Nicholson type quote wouldn't happen. It just straight up you wouldn't. You don't think so? <coughs> oh, wait boy. till you hear it. Wait till you hear it. Just wait. I can't wait. Did you have this a has, fisherman's friend I give you? Yeah, I do. I'm sorry. I'm going to hack and cough, and I'm going to turn my mic down for it, but it's just going to happen, guys. I'm sorry. I'm yeah, constantly people, sick. Get over it, people. Yeah. What's your problem? Yeah, over, <clears throat> People are like, why Why are you taking better care of yourself? <laughs> yes, because you know what? I just go, hey, germs, let me make out with each and every yeah. one of you singularly. Oh, why stop at the comment section, everybody? <laughs> go hang out outside hospital. <laughs> <laughs> Friggin' relax. <laughs> We're trying. <laughs> All right? <laughs> We're trying. Oh, man. You ever wonder if people took their online personalities and things they yelled and tried to translate that to real life? Yeah, I go, man, who are these people? And I realize they're sitting next to me in traffic. This lady, I did, I did my favorite thing yesterday. Uh-huh. So I had my signal on a responsible amount of time ahead of making my lane change. <clears throat> Okay. This lady. Because you're, you're a grandma when you drive. Adam no, I am this. not. I'm just Steve, smart in no, Toronto. Steve drives like a grandma. He does. No, yep. no he does. Not. Ten and well, two. Glasses on. Ten and two. They're, they're changing. Turn that music down. I have to focus on backing up. <laughs> no <laughs> music at all. <laughs> Listen, my conversation between me and my father has nothing to do with you. Listen. Listen. Dad, turn down the deep purple. I need to back this car in properly. <laughs> How long has the smoke been on the water, Dad? I don't want to be a highway star at the moment. Yes, I want to I be a responsibility star. So anyway, I have the three kids responsibility star. A lot of you are very confused. Listen, so I have my signal on. Deep purple, look him up. To go into... The right lane, which is for grandmas. That's what that lane is for. Yeah, you're trying to get back to your rightful place. <laughs> yeah. And this lady Getting decides, into his comfort zone. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to get to my rightful place. <laughs> like, oh my God. Uh, uh, and this lady decides, <laughs> how about I do 140 in that lane instead? Oh, gosh. So she's bombing it, and I go, you know what? There's a safe enough amount of distance. I'm going to cut her off. I made that a... Steven. I didn't say... Steven. I didn't think to myself, <laughs> I'm going to do this... I I thought to myself, on purpose, I'm going to cut her off. 
because uh, because you I, know, because Steve, must teach lessons. <laughs> yeah. So I, I will show you how to drive. I couldn't. And listen, I'm not endorsing this. I'm just saying it did, and it felt what? good. So listen, cover off, and it felt great. And then I see, I see this in the rearview mirror. I oh the finger, and I yeah. The, the people listening can't see what you're doing. I got the middle finger. A big old f you. In the middle, the person who just walked by thinks I gave him the finger. <laughs> um. So I got the middle finger. So I did my finger. Favorite. I took off my glasses and I held them between the seats so she could see them. Oh, my new favorite thing. Oh, that's when, good. When no, that's why I cut her off. You cut Not her to off. Be, I, because <laughs> don't you, you see you the signal? You don't see bill. the signal? Okay. I always. Well, my favorite thing to scream in the car oh is my you God. don't see me or you don't care. She didn't care. Yeah. So guess what? Cut off. Screw you. That's and that! And I and listen, Jesse, I'm sorry that I'm such a kind-hearted person that I offered her my glasses <laughs> so that she could see people signaling back. <laughs> Why do you think you're the person to teach other yeah, drivers Yeah, that's, that's what I would like Jesse to know. Jesse to teach this lady how to drive oh, hey. today by cutting her off and showing her my glasses. Let there be no <laughs> confusion. You're 82 years Steve, old. Let there be Steve, no Steve did you drive explain to her? <laughs> I did drive explain to her. You're 100% right. Right. Let's, let there be no confusion. There was no lesson I was trying to teach. I simply decided this person's being a dick. I'm so gonna, be a I'm gonna dick. cut. The, yes. Yes. Absolutely. I'm gonna Jesse. drive explain to her how to drive. I was. If I drove stick, I would have big stick energy. Because I just decided it felt good. I, I hope that. that Steve does this to Matt Sundin at the Matt Sundin <laughs> VIP experience for Leo Vegas. Oh my God. I hope you pull off your glasses and go see. Can you see the puck, mats? Maybe pass it better. <laughs> While eating a fresh, delicious. Ba yeah. yeah I no. I hope you carry this energy throughout your life. That's right. You, you have into this moment. <laughs> but there's something Dude. that happens when somebody hops behind a wheel and mm. they got all this confidence because they're in a giant metal tube and all of a sudden they can give people middle yeah. fingers and show them their glasses. And they never do this in their regular life. It's well, like being online. It's true. It's the same energy. Agreed. To, yeah, to go back to what you were saying, Agreed. Oh, the middle, as soon as she saw the glasses, the finger dropped. And I never saw anything else. Sometimes you'll see this. You'll see the hand puppets in the in the in the rear view because they're still freaking out and they're telling you what for. No, she just went. Oh, this just got real. A human being looked at my behavior. That's you know when you know when that safety feeling that you have in that little metal tube with four yeah. wheels goes away. The second you get into an accident, yeah, mm. and you're like, "Wow, I'm frail." I'm not um, gonna be an asshole just to try and just to try and be an asshole, and then maybe I'll get an accident. Yeah. You know? Well, so um, when wow. I drove, I had a little silver two seater Nissan for a while, and Steve and Jesse always used to make fun of me. And then I bought oh. a four seater, his coin, basically purse. the same the same car but with four seats. And Berkshire got in it once, and he's like, "What the hell is this car? Yeah. <laughs> Who can if, actually fit if in this?" You hit a pothole at a decent speed. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have been paralyzed. Jesse'd be dead. I couldn't fit in that car. I just, and the car was, by the way, like ten years old, but it was still in really good shape. Do you shape. think there's something comical about the size of my? Yeah. Regardless, when I had the when I had the little Nissan, the Z, um, people used to try to get they would get more mad at me because it was a sports car, and this was not an expensive sports car. I bought this car off a lot in Alberta for way less than I should have because they were trying to get rid of it, and it had like a hundred thousand kilometers on it. Like it was like, but it was. A rocket and so oh I know when I remember so I used to love to sit first off I used to love to scare Steve on the 401 it was so oh, much fun shoot, the second thing guy. was if you ever got into any sort of tiff people would go nuclear on you right away mm. it was never like it was your fault because you drive a, a fast car so mm. it's your fault and I remember one time I just looked at the cab driver who I met was having a tiff with. And you said, come on, pal. No, I didn't even, well, I didn't do that. That was another time in that car. But I just looked at him, and I smiled, and I gave him the all teeth, oh, yeah. and he lost his mind. <laughs> oh, like, gosh. have you ever seen someone, like, wanting to crawl out their window yeah. and just, he, this guy reached and grabbed at my window, and I kind of zoomed off, and I was like, see ya. And, like, with the window down and everything, he was mad, 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 mad. So, anyway. Uh, I, I give him this. I give, I give him the gopher teeth. <laughs> oh, that's... <laughs> and just make a silly face at them. It really nice. diffuses the situation. That or it might get me killed. Sometimes I genuinely apologize, too. If I'm in the wrong, I'm going to go, like, oh, listen, what do you think? I'm sorry. Absolutely. What do you think happens to the human brain when they're behind the computer? I don't that know. Gets them so... Because you're not like that in everyday life. If somebody cuts you off in a hallway, you don't start getting... It's a good point. Mad. 
But There's no yeah. force field in the hallway. I guess. Yeah, we automatically assume the worst about other people too oh, when they make drivers. a mistake. Yeah. Not just people, just drivers. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> this I I uh, rolled down my window uh, and honked at a lady I was next to at a red light, and she's looking at me. And she's like, and she was like getting all mad, and she was getting ready to swear, and she finally rolls down her window. She thinks I'm about to tell her off. I go, your brake lights aren't working. No. Oh. And she goes, oh, thank you very much. Thank no, that's, you. that's very funny. <laughs> yeah. Um, hey. She's like, what the? F oh, thank you very much. So <laughs> you could see Steve hand Matt Sundin his glasses. Mm. At the VIP Matt Sundin experience with Leo Vegas. Never do that. April twelfth and thirteenth, <laughs> you get to hang out at the Delta Chelsea. By the way, the uh, go for brunch at the Delta Chelsea if you get a chance. The Delta yeah. Chelsea, that little glassed in spot. For reasons. Also, great place to take a date. Just throwing that out there. If you live in the Toronto area, little little brunch at the Delta Chelsea. Go the see a Jays game this summer. I'm just saying, uh, good times. You're gonna play with Gary Roberts, Frederick Modine, Todd Warner, Jeff O'Neill, Brian Berard, and. One and only Steve Dang along with Matt Sundin. Uh, all you need to do is go to leovegas.net slash promotions or just leovegas.net. Click on Matt Sundin's face, mm. his beautiful, handsome, bald face. Um, and his it, face isn't bald anymore. It's just his head. Just his head. Oh, yeah. okay. His face, yeah, unbald. Oh, does he? It was bald. Oh, okay. Does he have the does he have a beard now? He doesn't have in the promo pictures. I thought he did. No, I don't think so. No, no. no. What? That no, might have been last year. Well, then he shaved. Oh, I guess there's like a little five o'clock shadow, a little Ryan Seacresty thing going on. Yeah. Swedish Ryan Seacrest. It's like for that? me. I like it. Yeah, you mean? No? Yeah, yeah, come on. Look at that. Yeah, he's got a little beard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're also going to get a private meet and greet with Matt's and a commemorative signed photo, which is kind of neat. It's incredibly neat. And you don't have to do it alone. You're bringing a friend. Matt Sundin has a nice looking autograph. Like, yes, he does. It's rare. A lot of people have crappy looking autographs. I'm one of them. By the way, we're confirming this. We haven't fully confirmed the date yet, but Matt Sundin will join us on the Steve Dangle podcast in the next what? few weeks. What? It's our yearly Matt Sundin interview. Get ready for <laughs> oh, yeah, it. We yeah. Did it <laughs> oh, yeah. So, and last year, he predicted that uh, uh, Elias Pettersson, or Elias Pettersson, uh, would mm. be... Um, would be a star in the NHL. He was that was the guy he pointed out. This time I want to know who he thinks now is going to be the next big player. Who's the next Patterson? Because he said if he could pick any line mates to have, he'd pick Ovechkin <sighs> and he said Pedersen. And Pedersen played for the same Swedish team that I think he co-owns, uh Jurgarden, right? Does he own Jurgarden? I think he does. Wow. And I you know, I knew Pedersen had all this hype, but I was sort of like, "Yeah, well, you know, he had to sort of pick his guy." And then the second he hits NHL ice, we're like, oh my God. Yeah. Matt, Matt was onto something. Matt was correct. Matt was 100% correct. Matt uh, would only pass on that line. Think about that. Why would you ever take a shot if you had Pedersen and Ovechkin on your wing? That is a really good point, actually. Uh, why? And I don't know. I don't know the answer Just to that. Just turn into Joe Thornton. Although Sundin did play in an era. The, the clap from the friggin' blue line. Mm mm. -mm. In overtime over the sense, I'll never forget it. LeoVegas.net or LeoVegas.net slash promotions, whichever suits you best. Thank now, you, thank you for coming off there. The, I would have gone uh, on for a while. I'm watching the first Daniel Matt Sundin VIP Hockey Experience video right now. It's pretty cool. So you can watch that video and see what it was like last year. And we was there. Yeah, we're not in it. We was there. But, well, uh, the well because now we had a player this year, a good player. Yeah, now we got a guy who's gonna be in it. Okay, calm down. We have a player. <laughs> um, we should play one period each. Here's the quote. He is so lucky I keep my mouth shut. He should keep his shut. I would be careful if I was him. What? Who am I talking about? I don't know. He is so lucky I keep my mouth shut. He should keep what? his shut. I would be careful if I was him. Dot, dot, dot. Is that Bobby Nix? That's not Bob Nicholson. Do you think that's Bob Nicholson? No, that doesn't sound like him at all. Who does it sound like? Bob Nicholson... To me, sounds like the sort of guy who I disagree with on many fronts, but we would have a relatively pleasant conversation. He seems like a nice guy. He seems like a nice which, guy. As Je you know, I always say that's great, but Jesse's like, that should be a bare minimum requirement, Adam. Raise your standards. 100%. Um, is okay. that Eugene? <laughs> that sounds more like Eugene. That is a Eugene special from this morning. Now, I haven't had a chance to go through this entire interview because at the time of the recording of the show, it's still the morning. He was on CFRA this morning with Bill Carroll, who was a longtime talk show host in Toronto and Los Angeles. Yeah, that's um, Bill Carroll is now at CFRA in Ottawa. We don't have the audio yet, so I wasn't able to go through the whole thing. But that's one of the quotes. And guess who that's about? Is that that's not about Ian Mendez? No, oh, okay. that's not about Ian Mendez. The mayor? That is about the mayor. Oh, Jim wow. Watson. Now, okay. Yeah, 
Uh, Eugene Melnick did go on to call Ian Mendez Bush League on air, and everybody's stepping up and saying what a class act Ian is. And from everything I've heard, I've never met the man. Uh, yeah, obviously. Y- yes. Um, I like, mean, remember I keep talking about the Mount Rushmore of people I will... I will, if you say a bad thing about them, I will just fight you on principle. Like, Ian Mendez is on that Mount Rushmore. What's the matter with you? What's the matter with me? Well, and I gotta give, I gotta give Ian Mendez credit because he followed that tweet up with a tweet from a couple years ago, or a picture from a couple years ago when his daughter was sick in hospital, Mm -hmm. and Eugene Melnick sent them, sent her a care package with Senator stuff and said, hope you feel better soon, Eugene Melnick. He said, so... As much as we're having a professional disagreement at the moment, we have to remember that there are two sides to every person. So on Ian's side, very classy. Yes, to say, look at the nice thing that Eugene the once did. did for me. Yeah, yes. and it's so funny, Aaron, Not Andrew. The senators, yeah, you're right. We need to divorce them <laughs> yeah. from each other. The yeah. sends from Eugene Melnick. Well, and and that's that's why that's what brings me to this tweet. Oh God. Do you know this, how hard this has been? This is from Andrew Berkshire. Oh, yeah. I just don't get how someone who is only alive right now because of Ottawa Senators fans can turn around and bash the fan base. It drops my jaw every time. And if you haven't heard a quote about that yet, that's because we're getting to it. This is a real thing. Do you know, okay, Jesse was looking at me wide-eyed there, and for a sec, it took me a second to remember what you were talking about. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah, the kidney. He is only alive on Earth. Because, because he put out a fans. public cry. Are those ones real sense fans? Sorry, I did see that quote. That was the only one I saw. That's fine. Sorry, yeah, and explain that for well, people who might have forgotten. Basically, basically I, the refresher on that is that um, Eugene Melnick put out a public cry, and I believe it was a kidney. Jesse, can we check that just to make sure? Sure, you want to? Kidney or liver? Yeah, I think one it was of the liver. two. I think it was liver. So basically, Eugene needed one. Couldn't find a match within his family and needed to find somebody who could. And, it, and a Senators fan stepped up and gave him his liver. Gave him the piece of the liver that he needed. So the Senators fan can't... I, I think when you miss when, you're, when you do that, you can't eat, drink, be the same the rest of your life because your body is fundamentally changed, especially your liver, which is like your filter. Yeah, I'm not a doctor. Can I, I read you. the uh, first sentence in the CBC article? Please do. G. Meldick receiving a new liver. And also, is the date on there? When is this from? This is from May 21st, 2015. The anonymous person who acted as a live liver donor to Ottawa Senators owner Eugene Melnick was motivated in part by a desire to see the Stanley Cup return home. A transplant surgeon said at a news conference in Toronto on Thursday. Jeez. That's that's sad. Well, and I mean, also they did an amazing thing and they saved somebody's life. Yes. Yes. Let's let's remove hockey from the whole thing. Yes. Now. But you want to talk about a complete erasure. There were. Goodwill. There were, and I'm going to just be straight about this, there were some rumblings at the time about why a billionaire who can afford to go down to places where there are prices for these things yeah. legally in the United States to get this done. Why he did that, but he's a Canadian, stays in Canada. That is not available here. Yeah, I there were people who were asking the question. About that process. There were ba- people asking the question. I'm throwing that out there. They, um, there were. There were legitimately were. And, and so, so anyway, at the time it was like, wow, what a heartfelt moment. That's amazing. Holy crap. And this guy just can't stop. So he was on... There's billboards. <laughs> Like three years later. He, so basically, I went through the, the, the primetime sports interview, um, and because of some issues with the studio and, and, and that sort of thing, we're not going to rerun the actual clips. But I am going to read you some of the but, things that Eugene said. the mics said. do work. Yeah, the mics do work. <laughs> and and uh, I'm going to talk about... Thank God. The, first off, <laughs> um, it was a 10-minute interview. It goes by very quickly. Bob McCown's a great interviewer, and he mm-hmm. starts with the LeBreton Flats and deal. And he had a great lead-in. Me and Ben Ennis. Oh, what did you fill in? Hour of good show. Oh, is that, is that what you were doing yesterday? Yeah, and I'm going to do it again today. Oh, cool. That'll be in the past oh, so by the time the you it. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm filling in for JD. But just for that, it's Donovan Bennett the two hours prior. Cool. Cool, man. Um, so the LeBratton Flats deal he starts with. And he says, you know, what, what's, what's the deal with that? Is it dead? And he's like, well, it's, it's the original. Eugene says the original deal is dead. Um, the, they're now looking at other ways, basically. Uh, he said, they're listening. He, he said, we're listening, but we're not in any hurry. Uh, we're happy to stay in Canada and expand upon what we have going on there. I guess they have, they have a ton of land around that arena. Oh, 
oh, there's a ton of land around it. And he I said, don't think that's the issue. And he said that w we could just develop that. Um, uh, yeah, sure you could. And he says his partner, is it Jim Rudd, wanted to develop like a 60-story building, and Eugene didn't think that could work. And right after he says that, he's like, uh, he's like, he's like, that might work in Toronto, but it wouldn't work here. And I'm like, well, you, you have to have your first 60-story building sometime, dude. But anyway, uh, Eugene didn't think that could work. He then it goes on to admit, I'm not a real estate person. So he says, that could never work. I'm not a real estate person. Actually what? happens in the interview. Sir, enough <laughs> about your facts. What of my feelings? He oh. said, this is the quote that stood out to oh. me about the LeBreton part. He says, the next time we do this, we're going to do it our way. Oh, because other folks and their input be damned. Am I right? And then Bob moves it on to, because Bob softballed him. Uh, the LeBreton thing is the way to warm them up. Then you get into the fans, and Bob said, "You know, what do you say about the fans that are really ticked off with you well, right and now?" Also, you don't have to grill him with incredibly hard questions. No, you don't got to give him a whole bunch of rope. No. He'll just kind of go off. Yeah, and he did. And basically, and I'm gonna I'm gonna paraphrase Greg Wyshynski's tweet here because it says it better than even Eugene said it. Eugene Melnick on Fan 590 questions whether the fans are critical of his team, whether the fans that are critical of his team are real Senators fans, claiming that one of the more vocal ones was a 12 year old from Toronto. What? He was mad. He, he said, well, yeah, one of these fans is 12 years old and he's from Toronto and he's mad at the Sens. He's like, well, he's a Senators fan in Toronto then. But he's still a Sens fan. And he's 12. You're so lucky great. to have a 12 year old Sens fan at this point, dude. The Leafs. Go, you know what? We're going to make it all about the next generation of fans. We're going to have a bunch of kids come on the ice. Our anthem singer is literally going to be a high school student, and everything is going to be about the next generation. And then you get Eugene going, ah, frig off with your opinion, 12 year old. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, it's so good. For our fans that are real fans, mm. we're doing the best we can. All we can do is keep doing what we've been doing. We've had a great record the past 15, 16 years. He's not wrong on that. Yeah. Sure. Uh, we've gone to the Stanley Cup Finals. We've gone to the Conference Finals. We've had All-Star Games. We've had drafts. We've had outdoor games. We're doing everything, more than most franchises, as far as what we can do for our fans. You know what? I don't totally disagree with that. No. No. It seems like the team works really hard. To please the fans. Yes. It's just everything kind of surrounding the team and the optics and the ownership and the management doesn't really do their best. I, also, think, I think what we never talk about, and I'm sorry to cut you off no, there, Steve, no. is how great a job Brian Murray, before oh. he passed, and may he rest in peace, what a great job he did managing Eugene. Brilliant. Yeah. Did like, we very... never heard from Eugene Melnick when Brian Murray was alive. Not often. Not often. Not often. And that might have been because of there was respect there. That maybe Pierre Dorian has not <laughs> earned yet, but God, God forbid, I don't know what it would take to yeah. earn it uh, at this uh, point. Uh, let me handle this, said yeah. Brian Murray. <laughs> you know, I, I, let me handle this. Oh, I don't um, remember. Oh, the thing about hosting all those things—it's all well and good that they did a great job with that. Isn't isn't that bid on? Like, don't they? Don't multiple teams go? We want to host that, and then the NHL decides. Okay, you get to. Mm -hmm. I think so. I don't know. Like I'm just saying, it's not like you went above and beyond to get. Those yeah, he, the NHL was all like, Here Eugene you go. is saying is we could have done nothing. Yeah, which is like you're it, right when you're He's right <laughs> when you're caught in a lie. It's like, well, I could have lied more. <laughs> <laughs> could have lied more, but I didn't. See, I'm a good guy, <laughs> noted good guy. Me. Um, usually, people get upset with a general manager when they with the kind of record we've had or with the coaches. But in what we did, as far as calling for a full rebuild, it is highly unusual in any sport because a general manager would not necessarily do that. He can't. He can come to the owner and say, by the way, uh, what I've been doing for the past five years, I've wasted all this money trying to build something. I did not succeed, and we have to do a complete rebuild, Melnick said. Uh, now, imagine an owner listening to that and saying, what have you been doing for the past five years? In this case, it's the best thing for us to do. We had a good team, but you don't get participation badges in the NHL. Either you win or you don't. Hmm. To win a Stanley Cup, I believe you have to have four or five superstar types around the same age, in their mid-twenties at the most, at the very, very top flight, of, uh, sorry, and a very, very top flight goalie. You need veterans, and we have several of them left, and we will continue to have. The owner also pointed out, and this is from an article at sportsnet.ca, you know, 
you know, pushing this out. Sure. Um, that the club possesses 17 draft picks in the first three uh, rounds over the next three years. And he said those picks can be traded for all sorts of things, including other prospects. Or don't just draft. Um, the whole objective <laughs> is, three years out, we we have uh, that we have a true Stanley Cup contender three years from now, I guess, uh, that doesn't have this, the gaps that some people have, some teams have, and that we stay within the cap. We know that uh, We know what the cap is going to be, but my worry is that we're going to be bumping into that uh, when you have five or six real stars that you're going to be paying $10 million for. So it's a matter of looking forward f- looking forward to do that. Now, on Bill Carroll this morning, and I forgot to mention this, he, he also said that... Um, uh, he said that the the when when Bill asked about the Leafs because that sounds an awful lot like what the Leafs have done, right? Mm. Uh, he said, "Yeah, but uh, he wakes but, up in the morning." But his I guess first thought is of the Leafs. Oh yeah, and he 100%. said uh, he said, "Yeah, but like someone forgot to worry about the defense." Kind of a snide remark thing. It is literally the first thing he thinks about in the morning and the last. What's well, because Eugene Melnick has the Eugene Melnick Pavilion named after him at down on there's a hospital down mm. on the on the lakeshore. He's so he's a Torontonian and he was a Leaf fan and he was a Leaf season ticket holder. So you better good. believe he cares about what's so happening good. in the Leafs. Mm. Now, Mm-mm-mm. also, I want to know what his thoughts on the Capitals were prior to last spring. <laughs> so all of that said, Eugene doesn't say a whole heck of a lot. It was this morning that was the more inflammatory stuff. And what's interesting to me about this is this total, it was his attitude, if you go back and listen, and I would encourage you to do so, his attitude on the LeBreton Flats was to me the most surprising. The rest of it's just, okay, oh yeah, real fan, real fans or whatever. The attitude on the LeBreton Flats is we don't care. And as a business person, your job is to serve clientele. And in a market like Ottawa, your clientele isn't the major sponsors, national sponsors that, say, the Leafs might have, or even Vancouver might have, or Montreal might have. Calgary and Edmonton get some of them, too. Like, teams like Winnipeg and, and Ottawa, and if Quebec City ever gets a team, that gate is the most important yeah. thing. That's number one. Adam, is he trying to be a businessman or a big man? Sounds like a big man. <laughs> I don't take shit from anybody, and we don't need you, and I know what you think, but here's what I think. I don't think he's trying to be a businessman very hard. He's just, he's doing that friggin' uh, just puff out your chest, stick up your chin, big man thing. And huge, it's not working. It's not, it's not working. Do you want to hear what an obviously real Twitter account tweeted? Nah. You, you know what's that? funny? I was just about to pull that up. <laughs> okay. Jack Maxwell <laughs> at Jack Max 1414-0182. Oh, By the way, when I was mentioning this, everybody called me a fucking virtual signaler or whatever when I was mentioning about this about Islanders oh, fans. So All of the off. Islander accounts were that. All the Islander accounts, I said it was like Islanders boobs one four six eight two. Yeah, like I told you, and and by the way, shout out to the person that actually made a parody account with that exact. <laughs> yes, that was yes, very funny. That was good. But Jack Maxwell, Jack Max one four one four zero one eight two, said this. Really impressed by what our owner said today. I was excited before this, but he has me counting down the days till next season. Come on, true hashtag sends fans. Mm, Let's yeah. come together and fill the CTC next game. I think. I heard the hexagon suite is a great deal. I might check it out. <laughs> I I think. Hold on, I hear the hexagon suite is a great deal. I Come on. I think this is probably a Leafs <laughs> fan or a Canadians fan. Yeah. Or some other fan of an yeah, NHL probably. Team doing a parody of a fake account, which is awesome uh, too. Uh, I yeah. want Jack no, Max he's to be been accused of buying followers before. Sure, but this is <laughs> this is a little too obvious. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Ah, that's it, no fun. I mean, the other ones. Have, did you read the other ones? The other tweets? The, the yeah. other actual, like the ones that, like six months ago, pretty obvious too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like but, it. Uh, yeah. This one, I'm like, uh, at this Jack point, yeah. Is so many numbers. It's so many numbers. I bet it's a Steve uh, Dangle podcast listener. I'm not going to lie. So. <laughs> I bet it is. I guarantee it. Also, I might start one. Who knows? Do it. You met who? 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 Somebody on the show might start a fake account. Smart insider fan. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to start. S- no, smart can you be? Insiders. Can you be fan? Smart insider, big man. Because mm. he's not. He's not a businessman. He's a big man. They'll have a back and forth. I'm sure. <laughs> it also sends insider fan. <laughs> <laughs> sends insider fan. <laughs> and when all those are taken, start with like eight six one two whatever. <laughs> 
I love it. I just love it. <laughs> okay, here's why I think they're fake. Or, well, obviously we think they're fake for different reasons. Yeah. yeah. So you said it. You went on primetime sports. Wasn't late. You was on at uh, 6.30. Yep. Eastern. Wasn't late. Relatively calm. Relatively put together. Yep. And I think he read the responses. Was unhappy with it. Called his friend Bill. Local Ottawa guy. Unleashed the trolls. Oh. I think the radio stations contacted the Sens media person out of courtesy and said, by the way, Eugene called us and we booked him. <laughs> Come on. Do you think they knew? No. I don't. Do they have media people? Yeah. Listen, by all accounts, I've so I've spoken to several people who've have worked for the sense. Real or fake accounts? Real people. Mm-hmm. No, like in person, face to face. No, you said by all accounts. By all real accounts. There you go. I spoke to real people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and they're smart people, great people. It's hard to work for an NHL team. And and I and I'm not talking about the front office. Some of you just raised your eyebrows. Good people. It's a nightmare to work for that team. <laughs> well. It's a nightmare. And I just don't that or he spoke to them and was like, I want to do the full media circuit tomorrow <laughs> because reasons. And he went off today with hellfire and brimstone. Love it. Love it. Extra cranky because he was up all night on Twitter. Yes, he was. Um, I, I think that when we all look back on this situation, this is just a hunch, not based on anything. I have a feeling that there's going to be a reason this all happens. And I think I know what it is. Uh-oh. But I'm not going to speculate. Hmm. But I think I know what's going on. Uh, I want to I want to tweet from Smart Insider fan. No, no. No. No, I wouldn't do that. I think coming I think when all of this is said and done, hmm. when the real story comes out about what's going on here, I think we're all going to go, "Ah. That makes sense." What's the real story? I don't know. Eric Carlson is I can only buy speculate. But I would never speculate on the air because it's irresponsible. Ah. But I think there are other things. There are other things at play here that are creating this. And these are things that even the senators will not be able to control. Also, you think he's feeling himself because they pumped the lease? Like, oh, yeah. Less than a week He ago. loved it. And yeah. you know what? Yeah. I, For Sens fans, how could you know? That, that's your Stanley Cup this year. Well, oh, it was awesome. Like when you when the, one of the best teams in the league, and Allegedly. one of the most hated teams in the league plays arguably their worst game. Like, if are we season. are we are it, would it be too much to say the Leafs are sort of like the Dallas Cowboys, in that like because Cowboys no, fans they've won. Yeah, well, <laughs> true, but the Dallas Cowboys are like one of those teams that uh, since they've won has right. perpetually underachieved. But they're America's team. They've got the biggest stadium. They've got the most obnoxious owner. You know they. They're blue and white. Yeah, um, yeah. People always talk about the Yankees. They tend no. to call themselves America's team, which really pisses off the rest of America. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's like there's a lot of similarities there. The Leafs management is completely different, and their and their their mindset is completely different than what the Dallas Cowboys currently are. But there's definitely some tinges of because they're so big. They're so big, how could you not hate them? You know how I always say I watch uh, one Patriots game a year, the Super Bowl? Yeah. When I was a kid, that was the Cowboys. That's right. That's right. But even those. even now, I don't think people hate the Patriots as much as they hate the Cowboys. Really? Patriots are like, well, you got to respect Brady's the GOAT, but I hate them. I hate watching them in the Super Bowl over my team. But, like, the Cowboys? I think, I think people hate the Patriots a lot. I, do you, They do, but, like... There was I've, some Twitter back then. When, when, yeah. when the Cowboys lose every week, it's like a... T- ah, Cowboys lost yeah, again. Yeah. I'm tap dancing on their grave. Like, it's like... It's, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, if the like, Cowboys were ever as good as the Patriots are, I think it would be a whole nother level. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. they've gotten that good recently, I guess. No, and I've they don't... I mean, Robert sport. Kraft has done some things, for sure. <laughs> Uh, but I don't think things in Florida. Mm. Allegedly. Yeah. Allegedly. Florida, man. <laughs> What's the, uh, the John Stewart line? Now the thing about Florida is there's roads leading out of Florida. <laughs> no, I'm just, I love Florida, but the, I think the, 
I think the thing is, is that Robert Kraft, as far as hateable people, is uh, maybe halfway on the scale to Jerry Jones. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? And Dan Snyder being the number one guy because he's the worst. Robert Kraft wore a Meek Mill chain for like three weeks and showed up to NBA All-Star Weekend. The guy's a hero. Yes. (laughs) Yes. And, but like all heroes, has yeah, some downsides. He has <laughs> Batman has some flaws too. Yeah, that's know? right. That's right. Just uh, His Batman. Parents were dead. <laughs> <laughs> so you have parents were dead. Leave him alone. <laughs> Things happen. Batman Things poster happen. and protesting Bruce Wayne. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know that they're going to make Robert Kraft as part of his? I think as part of his sentencing. I'm not sure if he rejected this or not, but it was like. Mm. It's like, you're going to have to do 100 hours community service or whatever, and we're going to send you to a sex is bad class. <laughs> He's going to have to go to, like, a class about why, you know, about, oh my God, it's about a safe sex. Episode. Like, it's just, and it's so, it it's is so episode. Florida. It's so perfect. Like, well, sex is icky, and uh, you, you shouldn't do it. Unless it's unless God says it's okay, then it's okay. And you're making a child. Yeah, like a it's child just for America. Oh my God! <laughs> so what, what any responsible seventy-five year old should do? <laughs> it's God. ridiculous. It's sort of ridiculous. Yeah, but you know, hey, he's rich and old, so can't put him in jail. Uh, no. This is so much better than talking about the Leafs losing. <laughs> Did they? Well, they won. They no, won. No, they haven't. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <coughs> oh, it's way more fun, you mean. I'm, I'm simply comparing it to previous episodes. Now, so all the Eugene Melnick stuff, really the big quotes came out of the CFRA in Ottawa today. Yes. And that's why going into today, today's show, the lead story was going to be... Um, was going to be Bob Nicholson and Tobias Reader. Which we haven't even gotten to. And the, the Bob Nicholson and Tobias Reader thing is going to come at you in two stages. First, you're going to hear what he said. Mm. Then I'm going to tell you what members of the media said. And I'm going to quote two people specifically, actually three, two who found a way. And Mm. it's amazing. Listen, where there's a will, there's a way. Found a way to to stick up for Bob Nicholson and one person who had the cojones or the guts. The huevos. the, the, Uh, the, The one person outside of the blogosphere who had the 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 guts to, to say this is terrible for many reasons and let me outline them all for you. Wow. Okay. So I haven't. Uh, yeah. I I'm haven't excited. heard this. And also, I, okay. Another reason why I'm excited. There's already an apology. Oh yeah. I don't know what he said yet, and there's an apology. So, um, we'll start with the quote, and this comes from Bruce McCurdy, who deserves full marks from this. Yes. Here's this transcript of Bob Nicholson's comments at the on Toby Reader. At this morning's STH breakfast, which is the season tick holders breakfast. And before before you start, it's like they forget people have phones. Yeah. Like the best the Marley's one was different. Um but they unload so much information on season ticket holders. It's incredible. And it's like they forget people are actually listening. The Marley's one, there was lots of there was like lots of breaking news, I remember, out of that. But there have been a few times in recent hockey memory where <laughs> they've just they said all these things to season ticket holders that they clearly thought was gonna be, I don't know, kept like a secret, like it's you're in a treehouse or something like that. Okay, nobody say anything. It was like Eugene Melnick's last year when he had the season ticket holders and it was no, it, was media it? Okay. media were allowed in but no cameras. And no phones? Hilarious. Hilarious. And people snuck them in anyway, I think. But um, Because of course. Yeah, because they're going to do that. Yeah, I was told, I took a history class. They're like, no recording so that you can take notes. I'm like, okay. Guess what I did? <laughs> I, li- I used to listen to his class in the car. Forget taking notes. Now, everybody read this quote in a vacuum, which means it was out of context. Mm-hmm. And I think context is important, although I don't think it changes where this quote is going. But I still think it's important, so I'm going to give it to you. Basically, he was asked a question about depth. Very general question. Okay. And somehow it gets on to Toby Reader, and he says this. Well, Toby Reader, who doesn't have a goal yet. Toby Reader will not be signed by the Edmonton Oilers at the end of the year. Toby Reader was a player that other teams wanted. He came here for one year because he wanted to play with Leon Dreisaitl, who plays on the German national team, who he plays with on the German national team. He thought if he wasn't playing with Leon, he'd be playing with Connor, and he'd score 15 or 16 goals, and instead of making $2 million, he'd sign a four-year extension at $3.5 million. Toby Reader hasn't scored a goal. Toby Reader has missed so many breakaways. If Toby Reader would have scored 10 or 12 goals, we'd probably be in the playoffs. (laughs) 
<laughs> Come on, he didn't say that. He did. <laughs> he did. He absolutely but, did. Oh, who doesn't love this team? Isn't that crazy? Yo. Isn't that the most insane thing you've ever heard in your entire life? 10 or 12 goals. Like, like Steve, oh. what do you? What is it that you always say? What is it remember. that you always, always, always oh. say about being a general manager? But if anyone above the general manager basically talks, it's bad. Well, no, not just that. What? If oh, you want to be one. Oh, if you want to be one. <laughs> this is He's not the GM. He's the president. He's the president. You yeah. want to be president of a hockey team <laughs> one day? <laughs> of an NHL team, not just a hockey but team. No, not just a hockey team. The the top of the hockey teams. In Canada. <laughs> in, in the biggest country that's the biggest sport. The city of champions, no less. Yeah. If you they uh, may need to change that moniker soon. No. No, no you never lose that. it. Yeah. yeah. You don't lose that, Adam. Mm. You never lose it. It's Once still the 80s. <laughs> Enough time will pass. Every city will be the city of champions. That's right. That's right. Cleveland. City of champs. City of champions. Um, if you want to be an NHL executive, do it. I've already been approached by people. It was years ago. I go, what do you want to do with your life? And they go, I want to work for an NHL team. And I watch them not work for an NHL team and then go on to work for an NHL team. It was great. <laughs> And they're not the GM or the president or anything not yet. yet. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Do they, they have the be. ability to blame fourth liners for an entire team missing a playoffs? I think that's oh, a president Jason, we only. We have the ability mm. to do whatever we want. I think I just said that. So if you want to do that, <laughs> fill your boots. Fill your boots. I was watching. Toby Reader yeah. is why we. <laughs> I was watching TSN yesterday. I was watching Sports Center in between March Madness. And uh, they had a little highlight pack of Toby Reader missing uh, breakaways. It was Aww. pretty, funny. They did, like, it was pretty like, bad. Three breakaways they could find, I guess, for the pack. But they were talking about it on whatever panel they had. Yeah. And they showed those three. I'm like, come on, guys. It's like when the Leafs <laughs> finished last. If only Michael Grabner could have scored more goals, right? And you know what? They wouldn't have got Austin Matthews, but gosh darn it, they wouldn't have deserved it. And they wouldn't have needed it because they would have had Michael Grabner. It's true. It's true. Shit. Now, there are. I, I've never seen. It was funny. I was watching Tim and Sid at the same time. I've never seen Sid Sixero say, "I think he's going to have to issue an apology," and very, very soon. Never seen Sid go. Anybody needs to apologize for any to anything. <laughs> he's going to have to apologize. Yeah, he was like, he's like, he's this is outrageous. Like this is crazy. I t- Sid is literally. He's the one who's outraged by nothing, but is but acts outrageous and bombastic. Mm. And and t- and Sid is like I like you could tell it was like genuinely like shocked, there's, shocked by this quote. There's wide-eyed Sid, and then there's you're beneath me. Sid. Yes, he and he then, got he got dad Sid, and then he did it, he and he apologized. did it. Well, who's the first person to break that news? But Darren Drager. Oh, Bob okay. Nicholson just spoke with Toby Reader. He apologized for his comments criticizing Reader for at, at a season ticket event. Nicholson said he stepped out of bounds, hoping they could all move on. And apparently Tobias Reader said, don't worry about it, Bob. And he laughed. And that's wow. funny. Now, um, Darren Ferris, Mitch Marner. No, is that Mitch Marner's agent? No, that's oh. Nylander's agent. Isn't it? Uh, it's one of them. I forget. I can never remember now his you agents. Got me confused. When you said Marner, I'm like, oh, yeah, that's it. No. Nope. When you said Nylander, I'm like, that's it. Marner. Marner. Oh, he is Marner. Marner's agent. Yeah. So the same guy who came out and shit all over Austin Matthews' contract no. is Tobias Reader's agent. Yes! <laughs> Amazing! Amazing! Oh, that's the best! So what to... What, now, Tommy, oh, did he say something? He did. Yeah. Yes! Yeah, of course he had a comment. Are you kidding me? Oh! Yes! So, so let's, let's talk about... Let's talk about this. Now, I want you to take this line by line, and I want you to pretend you're Darren Ferris, okay? Guys, my birthday was last week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is so, so great. So, oh, so I want you, to, oh. I want you to, to, really, to really own this line, okay? Mm, mm, mm. I am totally astonished and disappointed that the president of an NHL team can make such a callous and reckless statement about a player. This is unacceptable. Oh, So hold on, baby. Steve. Now, I read that in a very sort of quiet way. I'm going to take a quick picture of this tweet, and then I need you to read it like da- like how Darren Ferris would read it, okay? Mm-hmm. Okay? I can't wait. I can't wait. Now, I'm editing this so that you don't read the other part, oh. because there's another part, and you would you would definitely look at the other part, and then I would be upset. I'm actually bouncing in my seat. Okay, ready? I'm bouncing in my seat. That's the coffee. The coffee I want you good. to cape bait the shit out of this, okay? Because this is a cape bait. 
right here. The coffee was good, and so was the tea. Darren Ferris was Kate baited. Comment from Reader's Agent Darren Ferris. I am totally astonished and disappointed that the president of an NHL team can make such a callous and reckless statement about a player. This is unacceptable. That's that's what you got to do when you're cape baiting. Unacceptable. It's big un. Go back down to earth. I was hoping he'd call it problematic. <laughs> <laughs> problematic. <laughs> Which is the most overused term these days. <laughs> toxic. What a toxic work environment. Well, and Bob Nicholson. What's created. Darren Ferris going to even do about it? Like, oh, what are you going to do about it, man? Stick up for his guy. That's what he does. <laughs> That's what they do. I feel like, okay. Imagine it was Alan Walsh. Oh, my oh, God. We'd have so many yes. tweets. Oh, it did, and the tweet would start with 1 slash 48. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be amazing. Alan Walsh, for some reason, has not figured out how to connect an actual thread. Uh, so he just tweets them out separately, and you best. have to kind of put them together. No, but he knows when Mark andre Fleury is fifth or sixth in something. Yes. <laughs> like, he's, he's so good. Oh, God, I love it. What do GMs do all day? What do agents do all day? I hope read this stuff. Oh, that's what they do. They Maybe they listen to this show. For their guy. In fact, I might have some proof they might be listening to this show. Just saying. Ooh. Just saying. That's later. What? That's later on the Steve Dangle podcast. Right now, let's continue. Um, so there were several responses in Edmonton. Mm. Two of them sadly predictable. One of them surprisingly great and actually not necessarily surprisingly great if you've been following the author's work this year it's surprising in that it's against the grain yes because the Edmonton response is a tweet like this Nicholson wants the organization to be more open and transparent with the fan base that's his way the risk uh, when you're talking more is you may say the wrong thing or too much <laughs> Steve's face right now is the best. That's me slapping both cheeks. <laughs> he was you clearly wrong to say what he did today. He owned the mistake and did what he could to fix it. You know, Toby Reader. That's bias. from no. He deserves Bobby Nix. Great job. That yeah, you right. Owned your mistake. Good job. <laughs> and likewise, <laughs> bias Reader. You know what? He missed on that breakaway, but it was a mistake, <laughs> and he owned it. You know what? <laughs> Miko Koskinen might be mediocre, but he owns it. Yeah. So let's give him a three-year contract. That is from Ryan Rashog. That is Ryan Rashog's thoughts on it. Okay. This one is from Mark Spector. Okay. Spec. And Spec's comment, and I, if he were ever on this show, man, we'd have a good time. I'm telling yeah. you. We would 100% have a good time. Because he's, he's, a, he's a fun guy. Yes. But wow, do we disagree on basically everything. <laughs> Most and it, the, the title of his article, although he may not have come up with the title, title this is exactly what he meant. Yes. Uh, Reader Gaff won't define Nicholson's time with the Oilers. And um, you know and here's what Bob Nicholson is getting fired soon. Well, here's what we're we'll, we talking about defining his reign. Here's what Bob Nicholson had to say, and this is what Mark Spector quotes early on in the article. He says, "I promised I'd talk until all the questions were done. I don't look back on that in a negative way." Bob Nicholson said, "I don't look back on that." meaning the Tobias Reader comments in a negative way. So, apology gone. But where I got offside in my comment is that Toby wouldn't be here next year. That, if he would, and that if he would have scored 12 or 15 goals, we'd be in the playoffs, which is essentially the entire quote. He's like, but I don't look back, back on that in a negative way. That's what Bob Nicholson said. <coughs> I am, uh, What? Yeah. That's not English. Hey, I murdered a guy, but I don't look back on that in a negative way. Where I got That's out of line is when I stabbed him. him for the 11th time. Yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, it's crazy. And oh, I love that hockey team. I just love them. I love so them so here's... Much. So Mark Spector did a great job in summarizing the situation. If you if you feel like you're missing on the details or you want to know more, Mark Spector does a great job of kind of putting the whole thing together. And he said... What cost Nicholson several hours of sleep last night was he passed the buck. In that situation, you cannot pass the buck. That is your problem. And he's right. Who did he pass it to? And he's, well, he passed it to Toby Reeder. Oh, right, yeah. <laughs> and, and Mark Spector said, now I know many of you are disappointed here. You clicked on this piece to see Spector carve Nicholson in a uh, you-know-what piece, the way we carved most elements of this team a couple days ago. Well, let me tell you a little story. When I was a young reporter, an old-timer, in the sports writing business told me, kid, 
Never carve with a dull knife. I would learn... <laughs> I, I would learn that that meant two things. One, if you're going to criticize, be fair, but don't hedge. Don't be the guy who writes kind of hard every day or it'll lose its effect. Write hard, own it, move on. And two, never let the subject have any doubt whether he or she is being carved. We're not carving Nicholson here because he had a bad five minutes. If he was the guy that really wanted everybody to think it was some UFA winger's fault, he'd have shown those colors a long time ago. He knows what he did was dumb, but momentarily dumb. Like a goalie who lets in one from center ice, it doesn't define his season. Let in three or four, however, no, now... his next three. <laughs> let in three or four, however, and now we're getting a big picture view. Nicholson hired Chiarelli four years ago. That was a big fail, but it doesn't uh, define him. What? That's where I'm... Mark, you've, you, Mark, you've lost me. Nicholson hired Chiarelli four years ago. Let him be the GM for four years, and that doesn't define you? Okay. Oh, my God. Soon enough, he'll get a do-over, and as an NHL executive, this one will define Bob Nicholson, and he knows it. That's why he's taking his time. And that's how the article ends. I mean... Mark. He is taking his time. Mark. Come on. Now... Those were two people that stood up for Bob Nicholson. Two Bob Nicholson. Several. Do you think that Bob Nicholson just popped that out of thin air? Oh, my God. That's that a conver conversation has been screamed over red wine in those suites. God knows how many times. That conversation has happened before in that management group. And that's the problem. And one guy that called him out, Jonathan Willis from The Athletic. Because, of course, no, that one's not even surprising. You're 100 Wait, you correct. didn't get to the other person who defended... Oh, tell me. Who else? Oh, Jesse, come on. Our favorite Edmonton writer. Did NHL yes. by Maddie? Oh Maddie, my god, yeah, what did Maddie, Maddie say? Why didn't I check Maddie? What did he say? Amazing. What did he say? Amazing. I didn't even check Maddie. Why? There's only one tweet. Oh. But he That's enough. Add me Give to me the core. Add me to the chorus of Bob Nicholson, Toby <laughs> oh. Reader comment supporters. <laughs> yes, <laughs> do, 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 do. The Hit chorus. The parade of the parade. People. Oh. Mm. The parade of Euler Patriots. He quote tweets Ryan Rashog's report of the quote. Of uh, Darren Ferris's quote. Mm. So he mm. quotes you that and he says, Did you forget Jim Light speaking about his captain, Jamie Benn? And Nicholson owned his mistake. He knows he screwed up. Phoned reader to apologize. And you know, tweet. if you were to drop a plate and break it <laughs> and apologize to it, it's still broken. <laughs> That's an old Greek proverb, by the way. If you drop a plate, yeah. drop the plate. Now yeah. apologize to it. Yeah. Now do you understand? Now listen. <laughs> you should be able to make mistakes and apologize for them. Yes. <laughs> However. This is not the first! <laughs> well, and also, let's not stumble over each other. Someone's going to die in a stampede <laughs> in Edmonton. <laughs> defending Bob Nelson. <laughs> Seriously. Honestly, folks, in this life, the bare minimum, like you said, is just being nice. This is how I know Bob Nicholson's nice. If he was a dick, he wouldn't get all the support. However, he can't run a hockey team in a league with a cap. Hockey Canada, it's different. It's different. Yeah, it's well, it's weird always. when you're the only team in the league. This, this is going to sound very strange, but unless it's like someone who previously worked in the NHL... If you're getting someone from an international program, not just Hockey Canada or, you know, Hockey USA, whatever, buyer beware. It's not the same. It's not even close to the same. Getting someone from a program that sends players to the World Championship or the Olympics. And then, by the way, here's all these egos and personalities of professionals in a cap league. It's just not the same. If you want to do it, folks, go out and do it. Because the guys they're using right now, not working out! <laughs> Unbelievable. So good. And I won't get into too much with Jonathan Willis. Oh, right. We haven't but even basically, there. Jonathan Willis... <laughs> we haven't gotten to the uh, other side. What I love about Jonathan Willis is he actually goes in and, and <laughs> he looks at the goal differentials for all the teams that are similar to Edmonton. And if they had 12 to 15 more goals, where oh. they'd be. Oh, and, and the result oh, is the... <laughs> Uh, he got literal. Awesome. He got literal with it, which is amazing. And he, <laughs> which I think is tongue in cheek. It has to be. Oh yeah. Because it was pretty funny. And he goes into it, and he and he said basically, and he's like, well, and and he, the result. Where does that leave them? 
They're, yeah, they're third in the whatever division or third last in their division or whatever. Yeah. Well, where does that leave them? Exactly where they are. Actually? It leaves them exactly where they are based on goal differential. It's yeah. not even a blip of a difference. No, eh? nothing. Well, and also, like, okay, I hate to say this, because I have said this a, a, a few times, <coughs> if Edmonton adds, like, two wingers, they, they should at least be in, like, playoff games. If Edmonton had Freddie Anderson for a goalie, they'd be in the playoffs. Yeah, goaltending is probably the bigger issue, but I'm talking about, like, you know how teams got to have a thing? Mm-hmm. Your, t- your thing can't just be a star player. It's got to be, like, offense or defense or goaltending, right? Special teams. Special teams, yeah. yeah. Like, geez, Montreal would be in the playoffs in a walk if their power play did anything. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God, it's brutal Last them. year, you could argue that Edmonton's problem was special teams and the inability to uh, get a power play... Their power play on at home or not be no, scored and, and, and not be scored on home. during their penalty. It, kill. it was like sixty five percent or something. Yeah, it was it was all time. Yeah, yeah. It was you can argue that was the problem. Yeah, Anyways. but add two wingers and then Edmonton's got to have like an elite offense just by virtue of having that three headed monster that they have. Mm-hmm. Yep. But I've watched a lot of Edmonton games this year, folks. A lot of their goals, I think, come from the fact that. They were down by God knows how many to begin with. And it was score effects. There have been, like, there was one great game against San Jose where I was watching and they were just getting killed. It was like 7-2. And everyone around the office who had been watching the entire game goes, boy, did Edmonton suck. Like, wow, did the Oilers have a rough night. But I think they made a game of it and it ended like 7-5. Which happens. Yeah, so if you didn't watch the whole game, you'd see the highlights and be like, ah, they did all right. No. No, they didn't. They lost 7-2. Like, it's it's one of those... Listen, no game is ever actually over, and we've seen several examples of that this year. We've seen... We've seen two five... We saw two five-goal leads almost get erased in the same week. However, there are so many times where the team just takes their foot off the gas, and a lot of Edmonton's goals are from that. So... I think the t- 10 or 12 goals you get from Toby Reader, I don't even think that would make up for that. No. No. They've had a really, really bad season. And this is this is the interesting part, and, and Jonathan expands on this, and I would agree 100%. It's not the quote that's the story here. The story is what creates the quote. What kind of mentality leads to that? And we talked about mm-hmm. that a little bit in terms of, you know, this has been screamed over red wine mm-hmm. in the in the box. This is the problem, and that is a symptom of the problem. What we saw with Toby Reader is the symptom of the major problem, and the worst problem to have is the problem that you don't know that you have. They don't know that they don't know, and that's the scary part in Edmonton. They think they know. They don't know. They're unaware of the fact that they don't know, and that is a scary, scary place to be in. That's where they're at, though. And that's where, I mean, yes, you can say um, uh, uh, Bakersfield has done well, right? Yes. Done well. Um, same with Ottawa. They've had, they've got players like Eugene Mello. like, well, we've got seven or eight uh, guys who are going to be NHL superstars. Yeah, probably one <laughs> or two. But okay, fine. Whatever. Th- think how you want to think you up your guys. That's cool. Um, the issue in Edmonton is that even when they have the right staff, when they have the right players, I mean, on the ice, they will screw it up. They had the right players. They had Taylor Hall. They had oh. Jordan Eberle. Oh. They had those guys. They had the right team. And they had the right assets if they needed to, to make the right trade. But the problem was, the management doesn't know that they don't know how, what they're doing. And that's the major issue. So this stuff about they'll draft, they'll sign, if we could just get those two wingers, that is, it, it doesn't matter because they're still going to find a way to fuck it up because they don't know what they're doing and nobody's nobody's at the wheel going, hey, why have we missed the playoffs? What is it, 15 out of 16 years? Yeah, and Brandon Manning, a healthy scratch in Bakersfield. Well, they, well, part of the reason they're doing why so. did you Why did you allow your general manager to sign your goaltender three days before you fired him? him. You must have been thinking for, before that, and if you weren't, why not? And yeah. also, like... This isn't like an in-depth plan that I'm coming up with here, but it just shows that like the very simple things you get wrong. So you're like Taylor Hall and Jordan Eberle. And one of the arguments I've heard so many times in the Taylor Hall conversation is, well, the Oilers' defense is bad, but think of how much worse it would be without Adam Larson. Exactly how much worse. What would they be? Out of the playoffs? 
at least they'd have a thing. Well, and Do you want to go up against that three-headed monster plus Everly and Hall? No. No. No, and you could have afforded them all. And when you have all that possession, also, if you had a deeper organization, Darnell Norris, and well, if you had an organization that would allow Oscar Clefbaum to get a shoulder surgery. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. There's another one. There's another one. Oh. Allow Darnell Nurse to develop properly and Kaylor Yamamoto and whoever else. And, and uh, yes, you play RV to get double hip surgery. <laughs> and you're shitting on them all year. You see the issue here? The issue is not the personnel. Because even if they had, if you were to take the Oilers roster and say, sorry, Toronto, you have to trade every single player for uh, every single Oilers player. And, and McDavid and Dreisaitl and Ryan Nugent Hopkins, the whole team, Jujar Ju Kara is over. Milan Lucic. <laughs> M M Milan Lucic is dragging his fists on the ground on the way to Toronto. <laughs> and they're all, and they switch. And they switch completely. Oilers management still would fuck that up. Because they're, they're, because the thought process, because the reasoning is off. And until they clear it out, until, until they do what the Leafs did, which was clear out the issues, bring in someone with a level head, who knows how to manage people properly, who knows how to compete in an environment that as, is as competitive as NHL executives are, you are going to have these same issues. It doesn't matter. You could get the second Connor McDavid and you will still fuck this up. Adam, some people would call that the culture. Ah, okay. but then they're so worried about the they're... fucking culture in the dressing room. <laughs> How about the culture upstairs, boys? I think and by the way, all boys. All boys, yeah. No, Adam. But they've gotten this far. What do they have left to learn? I don't know. Keith Gretzky can teach them. Uh, add me to the chorus of the boys. <laughs> chorus <laughs> boys. Listen, That's what they are. Jesse, I, I heard your snide remark, okay? He had a great trade deadline. He did. <laughs> it was better than Peter Shirelli's. Hey, they made the same amount of moves at the trade deadline. They he did. did. I think he actually. What a tag team I would call that a dead tie. A dead tie. <laughs> that was a tie. Um, and now they're talking about re-signing Alex Chason like it's it's a must thing. Awesome. <laughs> think God, the guy. Wouldn't, think of where you would be. Is Alex Chason even on the third line in Toronto? Is he even on the third line in a contender? On no way. Roster? Is he on the roster? I don't know. No offense. Like, there are going to be guys like that that float around the league, and I get that. This is a guy who went on a bender for save oh. percentage shooting. This is never going to happen again. Statistically, it's not going to happen. See, every time we say that about a guy. Yeah, I know. We, 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 get, we get Andre Pavlik, but, which, by the way, come on. That was amazing. Not oh, yeah. an NHL goalie, and he still, and he stretch. never was. But he had that really good run. You called after him I not an NHL goalie, and then he had like three shutouts. In a yeah, and like a 12 wins in a row yeah, or something yeah. stupid like that. <laughs> ah, <laughs> damn it. Damn it. <laughs> all the same, my point in all of this is the issues lie with the people at the top. Connor McDavid can't do anything about this. Leon Dreisaitl can't do anything oh, about this. Oh, I think he can. No, I don't think he can. What's he going to do? Connor McDavid could leave. Oh, oh sorry. You're, you're talking about fixing the Oilers. Dude, okay. Let's yeah, it's have, let's it's. Ha let's have this conversation. Let's have this ridiculous. I'm gonna blow my nose, but I will listen. Let's have this ridiculous conversation. Oilers miss the playoffs next year. Does Connor McDavid ask out? Next year. Next year. I don't know if this year's enough. No, I think it take. I think it takes every ounce of garbage thrown at him for him to leave. I think it'd be another like two years of this. And one more a year, I think he still stomachs it. Don't know about that one. Don't know he, about that for one. For him to want out of Edmonton, he has to see a pathway of his career mm. not going anywhere. Do you not see that that's what's happening, you, you though? Can, you, can, you have a faith. You're like, through the fall, you kind of see the light, but you don't fully see the runway yet. We're, we're still... What is the, what? How high is? We're still sixty thousand feet in the air. We haven't started our descent yet. We oh, started, we're trending. We're trending down. We're though, trending down at a very rapid pace. They're they're phoning in, telling us the lane's clear, we're, but we're not we're not <laughs> aiming for it yet. But if he starts we might not going make, down make the to lane. the what? We might not make the lane. We might not do that. Anyways, yeah. Oh, okay. If he starts seeing it, then he's gonna. Have to go. Okay. So here's 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 what I would say. What would you say? Jesse is not incorrect because this is hockey, and people are very very loyal. Mm -hmm. And I, so I would agree with Jesse on that. My thing would be this. How next season goes for Edmonton, how 
they make they don't make the playoffs next year. Mm-hmm. It's how. If we're in this same spot and they're still um, trading peanuts for peanuts, if they're still making the Mark Bergevin moves from 2016, which is we're going to bring in Dwight King and then we're going to bring yeah. in this guy with with you know, and then we're going to bring in Nate Thompson and then we're because they're all these character guys who do nothing, who literally are not above replacement level players. If this continues. At the end of next season, Connor McDavid asked for a trade. That's what I'm saying. If man. if they don't That's make what I'm saying. Edmonton had better make a splash. And I'm talking oh, a no. splash With what? this summer. With what? Better figure it out. Oh. Better who, figure it out. Who better figure it out? Edmonton. Management. <clears throat> and they won't. No, which which person? Which well, person whoever they man? hire, who whatever whomever the dummy is who is who is gonna take that Edmonton job. And never work in the league again afterwards. You better hope that Daryl Cates makes you a real sweet offer if you're mm. the GM there, because you're never working in the NHL again. As long as, as long as, and also, if that management group's interested in you, what does that say about you? Let's get dark. Let's get dark here. Oilers hire Mark Hunter. He would and, be an improvement. And fun. make the playoffs. I want the Oilers with Mark Hunter to make the playoffs. Oh, yeah, I want the not? I want the stories, man. It'd be great because everything they've done will have been right. Oh, okay. <laughs> right, it will erase the Shirelli years as if they never happened. 2015, mm-hmm. man. When the Oilers made the playoffs, that might have been the worst thing for them. <laughs> hey, we're heading in the right direction. They're gonna hire Mark Hunter. Mark Hunter. They're gonna make the playoffs next year by the hair, by the skin of their teeth, and then we'll see. <laughs> And then we'll see. Mm. I, all I am saying is, ah, yuck. Just yuck with all this. Poor Oilers fans, man. Poor, well, poor Tobias Reader. It's actually mind-blowing how few of them see it, too. Like, there's a lot yeah. of Oilers fans who are like, eh, I don't know. Now, I, I think the ones who don't see it are just loud. I think most of them see it. One guy who for sure, for sure, is angling for a job is Mike Gillis. Now, he said... Okay. He did say he was very humble. He had a uh, uh, he had a little Q and A with Pierre LeBrun, and uh, um, he has traveled the world looking for next level knowledge from other sports organizations. Not sure if he'll ever run an NHL team again, but if he does, get ready for a whole new way of doing things. That is Pierre LeBrun's lead in to this this Q and A. And Gillis said the top organizations are removing hope from the equation. They're implementing plans and implementing a strategy that that constantly drives leadership and culture. As a result, they take the players that may not be successful uh, that may sorry may not be successful somewhere else, and they become successful there. And I know what he's talking about. Hmm. Talking about guys that like the the Patriots will pick up some random wide receiver, and they'll go and people will be like, who the hell is that? And then they'll they'll put them in and they'll be like, do this one thing. Yeah. You can do this one thing, do this one thing. And he'll become this massive success and be really great. And then he'll sign elsewhere several years later for a lot of money and be awful again. Yeah. Hey, Danny Woodhead, you're going to stand in the slot and you're going to run a, a route that crosses the mill. And Tom Brady's going to hit you on the run. And it's going to work every time. And then you're going to make lots of millions of dollars. Yes. Yes. For some other team. Exactly. Done with you. Hey, Matt Castle. Yeah. Uh, we know Tom Brady's out this season. Do you mind? Uh, do you mind taking over? Oh wow, you went twelve and three. Congratulations. Kansas City just gave you a pile of money, and the next year, what was he? Eight and eight. Oh, maybe yeah. Yeah. not good. Yeah, I don't remember. Not good. And that's when KC was on their way up too. It was a good yeah. team. Um, I love that a difference of four wins is. Well, I mean, you so think of the percent. Been... Well, it might have even been less. Yeah. But it's um, the it's the NFL, right? Yeah. 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 And the the point. The point here is, I know where Mike Gillis is going with this. My question to Mike Gillis would be, what would be different from last time in, in Vancouver? Are you talking about advanced stats or are you not? So you, I would recommend you read that article, but I think Mike Gillis is campaigning for a job. Mm-hmm. I bet you Edmonton, that's a sleeper for me. That's the guy. That, to me, seems like the kind of guy Edmonton would want. I, Been I, to the Stanley that's Cup. That's the best name I've heard so far. They'll hire both general managers from the 2011 Stanley Cup Finals. Hey, how about that? Listen. He's a better suggestion than I've heard. What have you heard? Well, like Mark Hunter was one of them. Wasn't John Ferguson? Why would Mark Jr. Hunter be a bad? I think Mark Hunter would make a great GM. Not I, maybe not a great GM, but I think he'd be a competent. Why do GM. you think not? I'm just listen. Okay, he might. He might. He absolutely might. But what evidence is there? Everyone's talking about like the Leafs missed this gem. His draft record wasn't that 
awesome. It was okay. Yeah. There were some okay. bright spots. Travis Dermott was a good one. There were some Bracco has for turned sure. into a good but one. But you look at someone like Dubis, who hey, you say, hey, here's the keys, and that's your first job. Mark Hunter needs his first job, and I think somebody needs to give it to him to see what he can do. And I and I think if somebody makes a decision to give it to him, I won't hate that decision because he needs his first job decision. Totally. But there's this lore about him that he's this all-knowing hockey man. Well, and that's with sure. certain members of the media, and that's because he's friends with them. Yeah. Yes, and it's so that's different. That's not his fault. And no, and that's it's not. not gonna... no. That was a, it's a good PR job. It's not yeah. his fault. <laughs> right. And, I, the, and the London Knights, but sure. that's a little different, too. It's so that's like running Hockey running Canada. Running the London yeah. Knights. Yeah. Running the London Knights, who would never grease a player. Never. Never. <laughs> How dare you even suggest it. Hey. The London Knights, <laughs> it's so different running the London Knights than running an NHL team. It's the same with uh, Bob Nicholson, mm -hmm. you know, the Hockey Canada NHL thing. It's not the same. I would compare running the London Knights to running, like, Manchester United or Real Madrid without having to pay the players. Like, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, like, yeah. it's literally, like, free-for-all, there's no cap here, uh, you can spend as much money as you want. Yeah. yeah. And you could say, you know, the same thing about Kyle Dubas. He was just some guy. He was in the OHL. He was given the shot. You know, I suppose yeah. you could say that. But, like, Mark Hunter, there's been this lore for the longest time, and I just feel like if he was as incredible as everyone talks about, like, wouldn't he work in the NHL right now? Also, if you're Mark Hunter, why would you screw with Happy? He seems happy. He's not exactly a young man. And he's having a great time. Oh, he's ambition. Running a team with his ambition. Ambition. I don't remember. There's only ambition. 30. Ambition wins Memorial Cup after Memorial Cup. Team. Yeah, but that might not be enough for some people. He played in the I NHL. Yeah. But sometimes you're good at something. And then you can go and be with Wayne Gretzky's buddy and go run the team. Yeah. And there's only 30 of those jobs. Maybe the right one just didn't come up yet. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Yeah, yeah Maybe. I understand the ambition part yeah. of it. I, I, I get, get that. that. Totally. I just, I don't know. If you're happy doing something. Sure. I don't think he would be bad. I don't think he would be great either. I think he would be middle of the pack. Like someone someone I at least admire for their, like I guess sticking to their guns is like Dave Branch with uh, this Canadian Hockey League. People are always talking about, oh, he should be up for an NHL job. And Well, I don't know. He kind of just likes his junior hockey thing. But he's also like a... He's also like the commissioner, right? Like he's yeah, the top dog. Dave Branch yeah. doesn't make player moves. No, but that's <clears throat> that's what happens. No, like I'm saying, he would go. Oh, like if Gary ever left. Oh, yeah, okay, sorry. No, we were confused. Bad. This doesn't go really. No, no, no. no. <laughs> but like also, sometimes you're good at the thing you do. You can't break up the mafioso at the top of the NHL chain right now. Oh yeah, no, that too. Oh, like, sometimes you're just good at the thing you do, and why not stick to that? And the answer, I suppose, would be ambition. So that it's up to him. It's up to him. I just, he might end up being the best man for the job. I'm just curious as to what that's based on. Hey, Steve, why don't you just stick to LFRs and stop all the dang it videos and all the other awesome Whoa. stuff you do? You know, do, why don't you not do a podcast? Why don't you just stick to LFRs because you're good at that? Why are you acting like I don't get sent that every day? <laughs> Minus the compliment at the beginning about the LFRs. Yeah. Get dangled they off my TV. <laughs> I'm just saying. Piece people of shit. like to expand and grow and do other things. So, oh, yeah. and listen, I understand. It. Yeah. But I also wouldn't blame him for sticking to what he's done really well. Sure. Mm. Also, like. And a middle of the road GM who is not bad and not good can also win you a Stanley Cup. Would still be a lot better than what the Oilers have or have had. No offense to Keith Gretzky. We don't know what kind of GM he could be. He hasn't done anything. <laughs> He's paid his dues. But add me to the chorus of Keith Gretzky fans. Because you know what? If Keith Gretzky acts like a potato, chances are the Oilers will get better. Absolutely. I'm not even kidding. If, if he, he has, does nothing. Man. If he does nothing. But can better. he repeat the success of this past trade deadline? <laughs> We'll, we'll see. Stay Keith, tuned. we're going to have you on for an interview half an hour before the... Well, what do you got going on? Well, nothing. Wow. Keith Gretzky, no. everyone. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Unreal. No, actually, you know what? In all honesty, to, to be fair to Keith Gretzky, what were the Oilers really going to do? They could have sold a few pieces, I guess, but I guess they were still trying to push that, hey, we might make it. Well, I remember we, that happened like live in the podcast. I was like, like look at this. They could have traded Alex Chase on and... Toby Reader and... Uh, uh, Alex Chase. No, but no, no, there's no market nothing. for Toby Reader. Yeah. I don't think. Brandon Mint. I think, besides the fact that, unfortunately, Darren Ferris is his man, his agent, I have a feeling that Toby Reader's, like could potentially be like a lesser skilled Tyler Ennis. Guy's got wheels. If you have him on a reclamation project, like 
So next year, apparently, and this is from a, an STP listener. Thank you so much for pointing this out. I forget your handle at the moment. But I, I mentioned this yesterday on Twitter. I said, Toby Reader would be a guy where I would put him... I would put him on the uh, on, the, on fourth? the fourth line, and if Babs is the kind of guy that likes to put fourth liners out there for penalty kill situations, Toby Reader's your guy, man. That's the guy you want. So you'd put him in a position where he doesn't have to score goals. He'll probably score a few because he doesn't have to. And he'd be on a team that doesn't care if the fourth line scores. Yeah, exactly. That's the point, right? Or like take him out of a goal. A Toby Reader's not a goal scorer, so stop putting him in that position. That's mm. the Oilers' problem. The Leafs' thing is, no, we're going to put you in a position where you're supposed to succeed at least. On forward. Defense, not so much. Um, and I, I I look at a guy like Toby Reader and I go, man, yeah, that is a, that's a perfect guy that you can sign. You can sign him to a million bucks, and you know you can bury the entire million next year. It's yep. 1.025. That's yeah. the number that you can bury in the minors next season, which is a lot of money. I, and this is very galaxy brain, but I'll throw it out there anyway. You know how you can trade like conditional picks and stuff in trades? Well, you can't really do that in a contract negotiation. But what you can do is... You know, if you're if you're if you mostly love the contract that Mitch Marner has been offered by the Leafs, I'll put a dollar in the jar. If you mostly love love it, but you're not a hundred percent there, and the Leafs won't budge, you go. Well, you know what? I got another client too. That happens with agents all the time. So if if you just need to get that eh, extra inch to get over the finish line, eh, sign Toby Reader to the fourth line. Could, could be a thing. Because the Leafs will probably lose Tyler Ennis. I think he's going to get a good contract somewhere. Yeah, I don't know. I Because he could, if that is his I mean, ambition. I Tyler Ennis would look awful good with Connor McDavid. <laughs> totally. And he's made his money, but like he signed with the Leafs to be with their medical staff, and mm-hmm. he's needed it at times over the season. If he's happy with his situation, again, if his ambition is to go play with Connor McDavid, that's his ambition, but he seems pretty happy right here. Yeah, and he's fit in really well. And he seems to like it here. Everybody loves him in the dressing room. Yeah, and I know for a so. fact he like he'll like show up at sick kids and stuff. Yeah, He's a great Good situation. Yeah. Idea from Shane Doan, who now works at NHL Hockey Ops. By the way, this is not Shane Doan's idea, but uh, idea from Shane Doan. Once a team is officially eliminated, motivate clubs to win by rewarding most points accumulated in the standings at the end of the season with the top overall pick. A mini derby between eliminated teams to win for the pick. How? Where have we heard this before? And the answer is Puck Daddy in 2012. That's yeah. the first people that came up with that idea. It's almost as though Shane Doan reads hockey magazines. And the KHL um, with the Cup of Hope. Oh, yeah, the Cup of Hope. I love yeah. that. The Cup the of cup Hope of and hope. the reigning, I think, only ever champions, Dynamo Riga. Backstop by goaltender Michael Telquist. Now, a couple people reached out to me after I retweeted this and said, well, here are my issues with it. One, Tom Hunter, Puck Don't Lie, said, well, yes, but you you could argue that it punishes teams with injured players because they may have fallen in that position because they get injured players. And I would, and what my response to him was, well, you could argue that any game is punishing yeah. a team that has injured players. Another one um, came up and they said this, I'm against it because it virtually kills the trade deadline. Interesting. Now, no. Now, I think it makes it more exciting. I I would agree. If you're dead last, you load up. <laughs> dead last, you load. No, I think. Listen, if you're a smart GM, and like a truly smart GM, what you do at the trade deadline is you harvest assets. But I think this person she made a really great point because a lot of these guys are barely making trades as it is. And so you have guys who aren't very smart going, no, we're going to keep this team together. So hopefully we win the cup of hope and get our first overall pick and then everything will be fine. Completely ignoring the fact that you need to harvest multiple assets for this to happen. So what you would really, what you really should do is trade all the players of any value and bring up guys who are to see if they're above replacement level from your AHL team. Yeah. And they'll be playing super hard for you. Because that's sort of what happens. And you look at what the way Ottawa played Toronto on Saturday. I don't know. I think it could be very exciting, but our league is not creative enough. No. Well, okay. I enjoy that it's more hockey and people would be excited for that. But remember how everyone got annoyed that the first overall pick was decided because of tanking? Oh, just you wait until it's decided by goaltender interference. Just you wait. Just you wait Offside until call. Anton Hudobin throws <laughs> his stick mid-penalty shot. And the NHL thinks it's A-OK fine. And that's what is the difference between you having the seventh pick and the first or something like that. Just you wait. Oh, it's going to be great. 
I think it'll be fun. Mm-mm-mm. At least hockey be, is going to be such a great sport when it's done. I, it would be so great to at least be able to talk about hockey, though. That's the playoffs. No, about no, no. But like when we're talking about like okay, when the Leafs may miss the playoffs, right? Oh, right. We were talking about next season, next season, next season, next season. Draft, 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 yeah. draft, draft. And it was kind of annoying because we completely we let that the horror check here. Oh, we basically ignored the team. We but, stopped talking about them. But like then we, it just would have been more angry talk of well, and they lost then too because <laughs> they were so shit. They right. were so bad. I guess my point is, it would be nice to keep the focus on the ice a little bit more. That's we, fair. There's a lot of business shit in the NHL. We're guilty of it because that's the story. But I would really, really love to be able to talk about two teams that are way I'd love to see Edmonton and Vancouver just slug it out oh for God. the first overall pick how me? are you going to play with Drysaddle or are you going to play with Pedersen come on tell me you wouldn't fucking love that you know it's it's interesting it's interesting because my what I was about to say to you is the players would never go for that they would never go for that they got to play extra what are they getting extra money for that no why th- would they get extra money for failing <laughs> you failed. <laughs> yeah, but you're playing in it's extra games, isn't it? No, it's not. It's not oh, part no. of the current bar, uh, collective bargaining agreement. Oh, okay. So now these are these are new made up games. So my system's different. Okay. My system's you're different. You're just taking the points after points after you're eliminated. Yeah, is my yeah. system. Oh. And here's the thing: points after you're eliminated gives advantage to the worst team yeah. in the league because they get an early start like the on it. Senators this year would have that. Oh. They would they would easily run away with the first overall pick because they're they so were, bad. They were eliminated so early that they had like three weeks ahead time to build up these points. Right, and but you so have races for three and four and five, yeah. right? That are crazy. So you have it. It's still the same eighty two games. Yeah. But once you're eliminated, you're fighting for something else. So you're like that. on the last day, you get zero points, and you get the sixteen. Oh. Yeah. No, so you're you still basically pick. seeding them the same way. Yeah. Damn, because you know what I was going to say in twenty seventeen. Tampa would have had the first pick, but they wouldn't have because they were nope. in the race for mm-hmm. so long. So it limit eliminates the time yeah. that you're in the play because most teams in the NHL are still technically in the playoff race. Yeah. Almost all of them. Almost. It would be kind of fun. It's just a fun way to play. It's literally mm-hmm. the last six games of the year. Just Who cares? You'd, win games. you'd have to get players to buy into it, but I think <clears throat> I don't know. I, kind I think, think players they, would get into it. I think they would hem and haw about mm-hmm. it, but then once it was implemented, they would actually try. Because they want to play with these players. Of course. Mm-hmm. And then we every once in a while, every it, five years, you get a crazy story of some bad NHL team or some some somewhat bad NHL team overtaking the worst NHL team yeah. and, and doing it in half the time, and then it's a crazy story. And the fans from the bad market are like, well, what the hell? But, yeah. the fa- <laughs> but everybody else is like, that was insane! Let's go like- playoffs now! It'd be like this year, say, Ottawa gets eliminated super early, but then they win one game for the rest of the year. Yes. And it's like they have two points in the loser And standings. you just see them creeping. And it's like, oh, oh, no, we have the 10th overall pick, even though we're the worst team in the league. <laughs> would you want that? It would. Okay, as a fan, <laughs> it would be really fun. Yeah. It would drive Gary Bettman up a wall. Why? Because, because you get the- a situation like that, where the worst team would have, like, the 10th overall pick. We're starting to get away from the whole reason the draft was the way it was in the first place. It's to help make the bad teams not as bad, mm-hmm. right? And if we, but that still take does that. All of that. No, it doesn't, Steve. Not, you get a huge head start. No, but like, <laughs> but, so, what but what if, if you're really, really bad and you can't even overcome your head the start? The Leafs in twenty. Then you're. Then it's your management's problem. <laughs> okay, so the Leafs no, in twenty fifteen. Clearly. But you'd still be listen. If you're as bad as the Senators, you're still basically guaranteed a top three pick. No, but and if you can't okay. do anything with that, then Someone, it's your own problem. No, but what, if you what traded if, it for Matt Duchesne the year before, whose fucking problem is that? Sorry. Adam, eventually, you'd get a situation where a team is so bad they can't overcome their badness, and they get like a middle a middle tens pick. I don't even think so. though they're so bad. I don't Can think that happens. Look it, up? That I would be an exceptional, sports. exceptional it circumstance. Would, it is, but it happens because sports and everything happens. Yeah, right? okay, Eventually. fine. But so what, that one time? Yeah. I think under this system, the Leafs would have got McDavid. Probably. They would have, because down the stretch, they were even worse than mm-hmm. the McEichel Sabres. Who were legendarily bad. Are are they not legendarily bad right now too? No, nah, they're just bad. <laughs> did you see the did you I see the graphic come up? Did I tell you about this during the Which Sabres one? game? No. 
Did we talk before the Sabres game or after it? I can't remember. Jesse, do you know? It was Wednesday. What happened? Oh no, it was the Sabres that night. Oh, we so, haven't done the show since they since the they Sabres. beat the Sabres. So they brought up they brought up this graphic on, and I think it was was it Chris Cuthbert or who was the who was calling the game? Doesn't matter. It was Wednesday night hockey. It was John Bartlett, I thought. Okay, and they were talking about I can't no it wasn't it wasn't John, but it was who was partnered with him. It doesn't matter. Huh. The point is, they bring up they're like, well, and there's uh, some talk about Phil Housley potentially losing his job, and I don't know, I don't get it. It's a real young team, and they bring up a graphic of Phil Housley's stats: thirtieth, thirty first, thirtieth. Ooh, I think it was Greg Millen between the benches. Phil Housley's losing his fucking job, man. <laughs> yes. Okay, sorry. Uh, yes. Also, also, team like the the McEichel Sabers. Man, wouldn't it be cool? Listen, it gives teams hope. If you have Jack Eichel goes on a burner, just lights it up after the team, and, and he's a young guy, so think younger Jack Eichel. Jack Eichel, for, for, for some reason, now he's like 21. He seems like an old man. But imagine yeah. 19-year-old Jack Eichel taking the team on his back. Because he getting wants, him another Because he needs a winger. He needs a line mate. He's yeah. playing yes. for a line mate for the next decade. Yes! How, how awesome is that? Shit, you're selling me. It's awesome uh, until a team <laughs> doesn't have a Jack Eichel and they get really bad. Well, they get a and who cares? That's Eugene Melnick's problem anyway. I want to know you who know would have won the McDavid sweepstakes with this system. Oh, man, it'd be great. You know, it'd be, I, it might would have be, been the Leafs. It would be great to seed the draft based on those statistics over the last 10 years. I don't know if there's anybody left to do that <laughs> who's got the time. So much work. It's, it's so <laughs> unbelievable that the Leafs in the worst season of my entire life. Even mm-hmm. worse than the season they finished second last, worse than the season they finished last. Just the drag at the end of the season. They finished fourth last that year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There were three teams that were worse. Yes. People wanted McDavid bad. Yeah. And it's the reason we're having this conversation. And there was one ping pong ball separating the least from him. But oh, oh yeah. But but <laughs> I would argue, but here's the problem. <laughs> don't you don't I don't think the Leafs are as good as the, if they get him. No. Because no, if they no. get McDavid, they definitely don't get Marner. Yeah. And they then that next year on the Ma- in the Matthews draft, where are they drafting? Good. Yeah. Your fifteenth. Yeah. Oh, can you imagine they take both Alberta guys? <laughs> they they get McDavid. They improve mm-hmm. a little bit, but they're still bad. They get Kachuk. Oh, that'd be sick. Ooh. That'd be sick. Ooh. You know, if there is a guy that the Leafs I think need is either Kachuk. Yeah, you know, like I, 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 think I know what people are talking about when they talk when they mean grit. Those two guys, assholes, are they need an asshole, and the Leafs do not have an asshole. It's the market inefficiency. It Why is. isn't Kadri that guy? I just don't I think don't he's know. enough. He's, for one. he's he's not that really anymore, eh? Yeah, he, he needs to be to... so fiery. No, but like he, Kadri only has like a thousand percent. Like he needs to like Brad Marchand. <laughs> there need to be levels of it. Has it like under control and. Matthew it's and Brady can ch- and yeah. Kadri just sees death, yeah. and like it's it's scary when he sees that red mist. But uh, we called this a few years ago. The league is getting smaller and smaller and smaller, yep. and at some point, well, and it's and like Matthew Kachuk's not a big guy, but you know, it's not about small, big. small speed and skill. Yes, but the market inefficiency is going to become with less fighting and all that. It's assholes. Find a pest who can score. Like, dude, 10 years ago, Tom Wilson would have been some guy. He would have been just another guy in the lot. But <laughs> they made him into this... Demon. Into this, into this like, dragon. Into this last of his kind thing. It's interesting. Have you, uh, have you eaten your crow yet, Adam Wilde, on the Tom Wilson contract? Uh, so many oh, people I don't on think the yet. internet want you to. Uh, I don't think yet. No, 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 no. I think we can wait on that one. You're still okay. Yeah, we'll see. We've, All right. we've we'll see on I, that. It's I a start, long contract. Do I throw it in the oven? Do I put yeah, the we can throw it in the oven. oven. Yeah, sure. Right. We've He's done this show. Yes, no yeah. question, no question. I'll give him that. <laughs> we've done the show for enough time that we've seen guys have good years. Yes, you know. I'm not convinced. Mm. Um, now, I do want to throw out what I am convinced about: my Ridge wallet. And how oh. it keeps me organized. And how tough it is. Pull them out. Pull them out, gentlemen. It's the market inefficiency. It is the market inefficiency with grit wallets. Grit wallet. Yeah. yeah. It is grit wallet. Listen, you pay grit wallet, reporter for TSN. Um, you pay you pay a little bit more for a Ridge wallet, but you get a lot more. 
The mm-hmm. point is, it's tough. It keeps you organized. They're actually quite nice to look at. And every time I pull them out, people are like, oh, what's that? And then mm. they'd take a conversation piece for some reason, which I never really expected. Yeah. Um, it's like Magnesis, but not a scam. That's I right. dropped <laughs> a... Uh, <laughs> Sorry. I haven't seen that doc yet. I, I see dropped that. a Ridge Wallet reference when I was talking to Mike, Mike Stevens at Steve's book launch oh. in English. Um, I pulled it out to pay for something. I said, oh, if you want one of these, 10% off. Use, Use that. the code SDP. That's right. You're such a good I don't know. Salesman. I don't know if he bought one, but I told him. <laughs> you should have. Mike's a really nice guy, hey? Yeah, yeah. Also, yes. I have five bills in the back of my. Oh, because you got a money clip on the yeah, back. Yeah. That's right. There's five. Yeah, I know. There are some people <laughs> like, hey, cheers hey, hey. Our Ridge wallets. <clears throat> you guys cheers. have. <laughs> you can get it in three types of hard things. <laughs> Titanium, hard thing number one. Yeah. Aluminum, hard thing number two. Mm. And carbon fiber, hard thing number three. You can make I have a the hockey tie stick. Tie. You have what? I have the tie tie. You have the tie tie? Steve has aluminum. I have Al. And oh, I have. We all got a different one? Yeah, and yeah. I got a carbon fiber one. Yeah, it was funny when you guys were, when we were doing the order, you guys were like, well, I'd like this. Well, I'd like this. I was like, wow, I can't believe nobody picked the most beautiful wallet, no. which is clearly the carbon fiber because it's got no. the cool print on it, too. No. Does it hurt when you hit your head with it? No, it doesn't. It actually fills me with financial sense. Ah. It's another one of the powers of the original. That's wallet. true. Mm. Do you think that you. <laughs> if you. <laughs> what? If that wallet had 10 to 12. Sorry, 12 to 15 more dollars in it, do you think that you would make financial decisions? I'd better? buy the Leafs. You'd buy the Leafs. You'd have enough money to buy the Leafs. Yeah, but since <laughs> it's not in there. Then, can't buy them. This is turned wallet, into blaming Ridge Do you think that wallet cares about your kids? <laughs> <laughs> And taking them to daycare. <laughs> what does your wallet's agent have to say about that? <laughs> <laughs> this went to a place that is very confusing. Keep I'm, more of your money. That's right. This has made me feel lightheaded. <laughs> oh, and also that has that the thing that blocks the the thing that rips off your credit card. Oh, you know? there you go. RFR. Mm. That's right. That's this, exactly the term. <laughs> this conversation has made me feel lightheaded. You know what would help me not feel lightheaded? Fresh Panago pizza. Oh, wow. And what kind would you go with today? What Panago pizza pairs best, like a fine wine, with the today's episode thus far? Mm. You know what? I want a New York deli. New York deli, because all Panago pizzas are fresh, but today, a bit a little salty. Whoa. Oh, wow. You have. But some call it salty, others call it savory. Mm. And that's how I would describe the New York deli pizza. Now, yesterday. Now I'm dying. Oh, yo, I Jesse, need one so bad. Yesterday I was uh, hanging out with my sister, Michelle. Mm-hmm. And she's a listener of the podcast. And Oh, I wanted pizza. And she says, we should get Panago because Adam keeps mentioning it on the podcast. It makes me want to have Panago pizza. Ah, uh, yeah. So it is working, Adam. What's up, What's Michelle? Yeah. She's, she's not, like, she's supporting the sponsor and she listens. Right? Right? Yeah. And she's buying Man. Panago pizzas. Michelle has listened by listening to one episode, Michelle has listened to 1,000% more episodes than my parents. Oh, no! <laughs> Who have yet, oh. yet to hear an episode. <laughs> and I think my wife gave it a shot once for 20 minutes. I always, <laughs> always forget that my mom listens. Really? And, yeah. Oh, she must and, hate me. Oh, and I'll get a text and I'll be like, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> something I said, ugh. I am surprised her and, and your dad are so nice to me then if they hear this show. What? Because <laughs> we're so hard on you. Yeah. <laughs> are your parents not hockey fans? Uh, I think they've just heard enough of me talking for a lifetime. I never shut up growing up, so I think they're pretty much done. And, like, they're not impressed by anything much. All right. Uh, yeah, that's nice, like they, Adam. <laughs> my dad is just happy that I'm a good guy. And I think that, and, and I think most dads would be, right? Yeah, like, I think yeah. that's cool. He's like, I got like, bad news for your dad. <laughs> He's not even there. Well, maybe they don't listen because they don't want to know. They don't. They want to think I'm a good guy. No, Adam's great. Hey, speaking of uh, speaking of dads, did you hear about the dad that created a website to boost his oh, kid's draft position? The best. Yes. The best. So basically, this dad looks at his son's stats on Elite Prospects, and. And goes well. That is not good. He would not be in the elite category on this website. They're low. And by the way, eliteprospects.com. For those of you who don't know, you need to get on board. With How would you website. describe it? Uh, hockey DB, uh, Galaxy Brain Hockey DB. They have like they track stats of like I want to say like twelve year olds. Like mm-hmm. it's it's insane. And if numbers don't mean anything to you. Or you, do, you struggle with them like I do. They have a scouting report for a lot of the players. Like, you can read it. Yes. So it's not yeah. just the numbers. They'll tell you everything about this. 
strengths, random weaknesses. Random fifteen-year-old from Kenora. Do you remember when I brought up that uh, college <coughs> women's goaltender who had like a hundred and whatever saves? Yes. Elite prospects had a profile on her. Wow. When, when I brought that up, I had her elite prospects page. That's a crazy website it's, to it's run. A, it's insane. It's probably like six people too. Yeah, I'm yeah. willing to. Yeah, seriously, <laughs> I'm willing to bet there are many hockey players who could go on elite ho- prospects and learn something about themselves. Yeah, it's interesting. <laughs> I also like when you, like, hey, who's that guy? And it's like random AHLer, they got traded. And then you go back and you look, and they're, they're 27 years old, and they've still got their elite prospects like thing up. It's like, yeah. well, it might top out at a third line guy or whatever. And you're like, wow, that's cool. And they never made they it. They never made it. But like, you're <laughs> like, wow, that could have happened for yeah. you. Remember your favorite Leafs prospect from when you were 16? Well, elite prospects knows which tier three German league they're playing in now. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, it's so. Want to know what Angelo Esposito's up to? <laughs> now you can find out. I'm gonna look it up. Right Let's go now. find out. I'm gonna look it up right now. And then there's a story with a dad associated with this. Mm. But <coughs> poor Adam, do you sleep? Have you been I, I, I. This is this is sad. Last night was the first night I slept in my own bed in a week. What? Because when I get sick, I get oh. I get bad coughs and I can't sleep normally. If I lie down or I'm, li- or I'm lying face down, I have to see- sleep sitting up straight. Otherwise, I will cough all night. You sleep sitting up straight? Yeah. So you sleep, sleep on sitting on a couch? So I sleep sitting on my couch, like with my head to the side, like this is really comfortable and I'm enjoying it. It's, yeah, man, it's been the worst. It's been so bad. And I woke up the, terrible. I, I went to bed last night and Caprice grabbed my wrist and she's like, I've really missed you. And I'm, I looked at her, I'm like, I've really missed you too. And then I was like, you're a trooper, you know that? And she's like, what do you mean? I'm like, well, you've been handling this pregnancy thing so well. And then, and then we both almost broke into tears and fell asleep. Aww. So it's been and a week. And then you spooned, and then you went, <laughs> and you caught and hot breath on her back. And she's like, Get yeah. the f-. <laughs> she doesn't mind that. The thing Caprice hates is when I'm a I when I go into full sleep, I tremor. And one time oh. I hit her in the face because my body went, mm. and and now she's like really concerned. But she doesn't realize that she does it too, and she keeps denying that she does it. But she's hit me too. Yeah, I've gotten John Jones a few times. Yeah, yeah right. The flying elbow. Just, yeah, crazy. Um, anyway, what? So Angelo Esposito. Angelo Esposito. Here are his last three seasons. 14-15. He played one game in the ECHL. He took a penalty. The next season. <laughs> He, elite prospect knows that. Mm-hmm. The next season, he played for Cortina in Italy. He That's played 31 tier, games. Tier 3, right? No, no, it's just Italy. Okay. It, ju- it literally just says Italy. Wow. Yeah. Um, 15 goals, 23 assists, 38 points. Wow. His final season in the Czech Tier 2 League, he played for Motor Seske Budachovice. Nope. That's not right. Scored one goal in nine games, and, and that was it. One Yikes. goal in nine So that's what Angelo Esposito's been up to. Going to Italy to play hockey wouldn't be too bad. No. It's good life. It's Yeah, it's what a lot of players have sort of started to do over the past decade. They're like, well, I could play against easier competition and drink wine. Mm-hmm. And probably make pretty good money. Yeah. Or I could go to, like, Austria and get my ass kicked. Yeah. Because the hockey's really man, good. Man, if I was, if the hockey, if good hockey's what you're looking for, man, I, I would have a hard time not being in the Swiss League. Cause That's another good one. Because it's a great league. I don't know why I picked Austria. There, and no, Austria is great too. But yeah. <laughs> the Swiss, Swiss or Austria, just the the mountains and the scenery. Oh my god! You know what I should beautiful have said ECHL. Hey, do you want to ride a bus and f- fight some retired no. goon? No. Yeah. You don't. No. no. Go to Europe. Go to Europe. So does dad. So this dad <laughs> looks at. This is the best. So this dad looks at his his kids' elite prospects number. Yeah, elite prospects numbers, and goes, "Well, it's not good." So he. So all of a sudden, Elite Prospects hears from this website mm. that claims to be the actual official website with carrying the correct stats. And they said, actually, this player has this many goals and this many assists. You're wrong. And Elite Prospects like, uh, I don't think we're wrong. And they're like, no, no, no. We are the official site that has the official numbers. And they're like, well, no, we get the same numbers. But no, no, no. And the only person's name on that site was the kid. <laughs> <laughs> it's the one kid. Man, he, he really knows how to carry a team on his back, that kid. And so Elite Prospects, being, you know, web savvy, checked on when the domain was registered. And it was three hours before. <laughs> <laughs> wow, they wasted no time. So, yeah. Yeah, man, like, I got to give them credit. credit. They, like, they must have put together a white website pretty quickly. That's not easy to do. No. But, uh, wow. 
Very, very funny. Anyway, just a some dad out there just trying to Lori Laughlin his kid into the NHL. I was about to say, like, wow, how how trendy. Yeah, really. <laughs> really on brand. I want to know, like, were they trying to get their kid drafted into one of the junior leagues? I would I would have to think junior. Yeah, because I mean, how are you gonna fake like no, actually my kid playing for like the Everett Silver Tips? No, the WHL stats are wrong. Like, there's too many paper trails there. Mm, mm-hmm. It had to have been some parent who's like, oh, yeah, my kid plays for, like, Stouffville Double A or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. That's unbelievable. Crazy. Uh, one of the best replies to the tweet was, and the site was called My Son Super Stat Legit Stats. <laughs> <laughs> super legit, super stat, stat, man. Super stat, stat. He's so good. The next Gretzky.com. <laughs> <laughs> Who the fuck is Connor McDavid? dot com? <laughs> Players to pick. dot exe. It, like, it infects your computer with a virus that automatically drafts their kid. Read to pick this player to pick. <laughs> My kid to pick. My kid to pick. All right, let's do the press conference, gentlemen. The presser S D P. The Steve Dangle press conference. For today's press conference, I'm going to read a long quote from head coach of the Toronto Maple Leafs of Ontario, Canada. Is that where they are? Mike Babcock. When did that happen? He said, today at Leafs practice, my first general manager in the NHL was a gentleman named Brian Murray. And one of the first things he told me is, as a coach and general manager, never let anyone get in between you. If you do... You're going to be in trouble. That relationship is so important. Whatever people speculate or think, I don't think that's the case. I know Doobie and I talk all the time. And I know Doobie and I talk all the time. We've talked about this since this happened. If any of my comments in any way, I don't read it the way others did at all. But if any of my comments in any way hurt anybody, when I come talk, when I come to talk to you people, and anyone's wife in reading it the next day, and they feel hurt, then you've done the wrong thing. That's not my intent. One of my comments was about depth. Depth in the organization, we have to keep improving our depth. Everybody knows it. That's what Doobie is trying to do. That's what Jim Palafito is doing. Our pro scouts, myself, Sheldon <laughs> Keefe, developing players, we're all trying to do it so we can get to be like these teams. Tampa, to me, is just a model of what depth is. Doesn't matter if you got guys hurt, not hurt, so if there's any slap to anyone, it wasn't intended. That's not what I meant to say. You guys, you guys live in Toronto too, right? End quote. Wow. <laughs> That's such a Babs way to end. <laughs> I love that. So listen, last show we correctly carved Babs for the Muzzin stuff. Which we could have done, I think, a better job of at the time. I don't think I recognized it. As much at the time because no. I was so joyful about Jake Muzzin being in Toronto, oh, and I'm like, mean, I'm not gonna let Sourpuss yeah. bring me down. I, I remember saying something about it, but it probably wasn't as we should have. We should have jumped in. Yeah, yeah. Sure. should have jumped in on that. The, his recent stuff, I think, honestly, it was nothing. And people are talking about like I know the Leafs are supposed to be a deep team, but we're acting like they're the deepest and like they're the best. They're not. And there's no improvements that you could possibly make. It's just not true. They're a team that if Ron Hainsey gets hurt, they're in trouble. Well, you know it, what I mean? It was like, like with the, the Lightning two years ago. Stamkos got hurt, and they missed the playoffs. But but that was another one. So, okay. That's, and they had, it's and Ben Bishop wasn't good. And, you know. They had the depth to still almost make it. Sure. Uh, and, man, if the season was 90 games that year, they probably would have. But my point is that... It can happen, and Tampa has two more years of improving on top of that. Yes, they're ahead of the Leafs. Tampa's, if the, okay. They had a head start. Yes, all you can hope is that you do everything right. Yes. Right? Tampa should be ahead of the Leafs. And they are, because they've done everything right. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. And they also started, they started before the Leafs, too. No, and, like, also keep in mind, like, some of the Leafs' insurance policies have been injured. (laughs) Yeah, that's true. So, like, the idea that it's Dubas' fault or that Babcock is calling out Dubas saying it's his fault, I just don't believe it. But thing. my point from the last episode remains the same. Mike's got to watch what he says. Shut up, yes, Mike. I do. 
Like, I listen, I said this on Twitter yesterday about Bob Nicholson. I said I respect the honesty. I don't respect the honesty. I, I like candor. Mm. If that's how you really feel, I like that you said it, I like but it. I, I'm free to criticize it. I like a combination of both. And, and I, I think in Mike's case, I, it just, he has to be aware, and he's so good at this normally. Mike Babcock's a master, and no one gives him credit for this, at controlling the narrative. Yeah. He's done a not great job of that the last few weeks, and that's why you have Elliot Friedman writing about it in the first point of 31 Thoughts before it's even a point. It was icy. The pre-point. Yeah. Also, he says, can like, this marriage powerful, last? Powerful. Like, he's... Babcock uh, doesn't address things during press conferences that we mm. say. No. <laughs> You no, know, it's free, LA man. Free. So, like, uh, I don't think... Okay, I think there's some friction between Babcock and News. I don't think it has anything to do with Babcock, well, what Babcock has said recently. Like, one of the things we brought up yesterday on Good Show, uh, me and Ben Annis were talking, you think Babcock is super stoked Nick Batan's on the team? No. I'm not. But, Dubas signed him to two years, and it's his way of basically going, Welp, here's what you got, friend. Oh, I don't like this plur. Well, guess what? This plur's on your team. Shut up and enjoy it. Too bad. So I, I think there's a riff there, but I don't think it's what people think it is. And to close out the podcast, you have to give me a little bit because I'm have to, it's going to take a little bit to read. But I'm going to read a scouting report from our Reddit page. This is from Chino6815. A scouting report about us? Scouting report about the Steve Dangle podcast. Oh, Jesus. From a pair of pants. I'm going to blow my nose and listen. In a, very, in a very general sense, the top three hosts on the Steve Dangle podcast, when they're all healthy and in the lineup, have played very similar usage. They play with approximately three games a week, they play against tough competition, and they each take about the same number of turns with the microphone. There's some more subtle dis- differences in terms of cough state or how the duties with the top three are shared out, but it's still much more similar than it is different. And yet one of these is not like the others when it comes to stats. In particular, coffee against. <laughs> coffee is spelled C-O-U-G-H-I. Oh, no. When looking at the advanced stats, Wild's coffee against per 60 minutes is very different from Dangles or Blake's. Blake has much better coffee for per 60 minutes, thank you, than anyone else in this group. Yeah, do you ever get sick? I was sick a little bit over the weekend, but I get over my sick in like Man. 48 hours, 24 hours. I'm like, hours. four yeah. weeks, let's yeah. go. You need to start chugging vitamin C constantly. Yeah, I'm I always amazed when we do two shows, you're sick both shows, I come back the next week and you're still sick. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't do anything. I don't stay out late. I don't do drugs. What is this? Anyway, sorry. When looking at advanced stats, Wild's coffee coffee against per 60 is very different from Dangles and Blake's. Blake is much better. Blah, blah, blah. Mostly due to Wild's bladder and frequent urination trips mid podcast. True. Wild has more time away from his regular partner than Blake does. Wow. But the interesting thing is that when they are together, their coughs against CA 60 is just a touch over team average at 60. Dangle, away from Wild, is insignificantly better at 59 and gets his improved percentage from a higher rate of coughs for. Wow. Wild is 113 <laughs> minutes away from Dangle is at 80 CA slash 60. That's really bad. <laughs> when taking into account Blake's rare departures from seat to adjust the camera, the eye test suggests that Dangle and Wild share the most on mic minutes. Whoa. Very- <laughs> so that's very funny. That is I'm so the mind to Adam Zeitzel. <laughs> You're dragging me down. I'm just icing the puck all over the place with uh, these coughs. Take an outlet pass, you coughing bastard. <laughs> what I'm left with the, in this picture Wild and Dangle are a hard working pair, and the producing efforts from Blake cannot go unnoticed. They take tough competition, got stuck a couple of times with malfunctioning Mike, and say, and to say the recent mid-season arena shuffle hasn't been a distraction <laughs> is dishonest. That's, that's, that's true. That's true. That's a good point. Listen, it wasn't how we planned it, but it's how it worked out. <laughs> mid-season arena shuffle. That's really good. And then they put in brackets, shout out parking crew. Yeah, what up parking crew? <laughs> and though the recent call-up of Rachel Dory was an exciting development, it's sad to see she was picked on waivers and signed by Ian Teller. We didn't waive her. <laughs> well, She's we a let, free agent. We, let her, we did let her go to waivers. <laughs> Listen, she got picked there's up. only three roster <laughs> spots. <laughs> there's only three. All of you idiots have guaranteed contracts. <laughs> we had to do what we had to do. That's right. Ian, you friggin' vulture. <laughs> <laughs> all in all, the team is striving well under the presser- pressure of a recent uptick in views and a highly marketed book tour. 
yet a deeper dive into Wilde's bladder, urinary retention during a 60-minute <laughs> podcast alongside with his coughs over 60 leaves us scratching our heads. Yeah. As deeper concerns with this organization might rise as the trio prepares for the postseason. <laughs> I don't well know Well done! <laughs> Shout out you! You know, it's a good point. I don't know how I'm going to make it through the playoffs this year. <laughs> oh my god. July 1st, I'm like, I'm going to be like dead. I'm going to be literally a zombie, and then we'll take some days off. Okay, there's another life where I would have married Adam. <laughs> because you are a stubborn man, and I am married to a stubborn woman. <laughs> and sometimes I think you're very alike. So last episode, I talked about oil of oregano. Do you have any of that? Oh, I think we have it at home, yeah. Do you see what he and just he didn't, did? He didn't. See what he just did? I'm not touching you that shit. You and Sir Louise are the same freaking person. <laughs> did you take the shit? No! Of course you didn't! Why would you? It was I, advice that I gave I, you. I'm not even sick you're anymore. You're just like her! I'm just, I'm just, I'm no, mucusy. You're not even, no, you sound great. <laughs> Do you take vitamin C? Oh, yeah, sometimes, but like... Oh, yeah, sometimes! Uh, Guys, there's no proof that vitamin... In fact, there's proof that vitamin C doesn't do anything no, for you. You take any like vitamins? Yeah, yeah, I take multivitamin. Gummies, yeah? little no. gummies. Yeah. Watch this. I, t- I take a multivitamin. When was the last time you took it? Yesterday. Okay, good one. Flintstones? No, they're the gummy ones, the adult gummies, <laughs> because sarcastic. I'm a boy. <laughs> I'm a little Did boy. Did you get a full eight hours? No, I get six. Why'd oh, you get six? You need more than six Why'd you get hours? six? Yes, yes, you do. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Yes, you do. Why'd you get six? You woke uh, up at four in the morning. You need more than six I don't know. I, you know when you're on a roll at your house and you're cleaning stuff out? Go to bed! Oh, yes. That's what I was doing. Have oil of oregano and go to bed! <laughs> you don't need a medical degree for it! Oh my god! I was doing stuff, I'm man. I'm home with her! I'm very and productive. no one values my opinion! <laughs> I come here, and it's all iceberg trying to suggest <laughs> cold remedies, and no one gives a shit! <laughs> Listen to me per 60! <laughs> it's what's our, What is our listening per 60? It's, it's not zero. It's awful! Yeah. It's dragging us down! <laughs> <laughs> it's not hot. Uh, Oil of oregano! What's it in the house for? Caprice when she gets sick. <laughs> Follow the guys on Twitter at Steve underscore Dangle, at Adam W Y L D E, and at Jesse Blake. The Steve Dangle Podcast. Brought to you by Panago Pizza. Order at panago.com and stuff your face with deliciousness.